return and back for the Redbirds is Avion Kaysan in this one double-A semifinal. A trip to Chattanooga and the national championship game next week is on the line. And back at his own end zone to take the ball is Avion Kaysan. He's out across the 10 to the 15. He shakes a tackler and he's taken down by the defense there at the 18, but there is a flag on the play. Yeah, I think we're gonna get a block in the back here against Illinois State. That's gonna back them up against their own goal line. Uh, I'm not sure which number that was, but you can may be able to see it here in the uh, replay that we're gonna have. Let's get the call first from the official. David Young of Georgia Southern in on that tackle for the Eagles. The Redbird offense, as we said, will be led by Dusty Burke. When they come out, we'll just figure out exactly from which point he'll be starting here. It's a beautiful day for football, 70 degrees, sunshine, and a light breeze. And the initial indication is a face mask against Georgia Southern. So the Redbirds will tack some yardage onto that Avion Kaysan return. They threw that flag right at the back of uh, one of the Illinois State blockers, and it almost looked like it had to be an illegal block in the back, but this is really going to help Illinois State and give them decent field position to start the football game. You recall last week against Hofstra, the Redbirds marched down the field on their opening possession, but were, uh, they missed out on a, uh, on a field goal but we're very impressive on offense, and it looks like they're going to be re-kicking <laughs> here, actually. We're going to have to get an explanation of this, but I did see the official walking to the sideline with one of the footballs. I don't know if it didn't have the right air pressure in it or what, and he took it out of play, so now we got a new ball in, and they're going to re-kick the ball from the 20-yard line. So there is a penalty, but they're going to re-kick from the 20-yard line. Very unusual circumstances to start this uh, one double playoff game. We don't see that that often. See him re-tee it up and kick it like this. Well, if there's any win advantage right now, Kurt, it's at the back of Georgia Southern. There's probably about an 8 to 10 mile win, and uh, that really doesn't help them offensively because they aren't going to throw it, but uh, Illinois State will have it in the second quarter. So Chris Chambers re-tees it this time at his own 20. And Avion Kaysan is back again for the Redbirds, standing about his 15, and will start this whole thing all over again. If you've just joined us, we are just underway in the 1AA semifinal between 11-2 Georgia Southern and 11-2 Illinois State. And it's Kaysan this time back at his 10-yard line. Cuts to the far sideline. He's across the 30 before he's taken down at the 32. A nice return. That's right. They'll pick up about 18 yards in that exchange of plays right there. They had the ball down well inside their own 20. This way they're going to start it at the 32. Big uh, benefit right there for Illinois State. Let's see what they line up here offensively. The contrasting styles will be this. The Redbirds will have four receivers, most likely in the pattern. And when we see Georgia Southern's offense, you're going to see the flex bone, the wishbone. Dusty Burke under center, the redshirt freshman. Preisker and Bardwell, a pair of tight ends. They go double tight end offense to start for Illinois State now. Burke hands to Kaysan. He stopped immediately for a short gain. He surges forward to about the 35. Dante Harrow, credited with the tackle for Georgia Southern. Redbirds have Scott Preisker as the tight end. John Lorenny, Steve Castro, and Willie Watts there. Lorenny and the and Castro are a one-two punch. King, Hamill, Wolf, Rodbro, and Van Gorder are your linemen up front for the Redbirds. Again, Dusty Burke is the quarterback under center. Chris Van Gorder is getting his third start in his career right here. He's filling in for Aaron Peterson, who was er injured there at the end of the season. A little option this time from the Redbirds. And Kaysan gets to the outside. He's to the 40-yard line before he's finally dragged down that time by Ryan Haddon, who came up with strong safety to make the tackle. But he's across the 40 of Illinois State. I think it's one thing that we haven't pointed out. Illinois State will run the option a little bit as well, Kurt. Pasquita, Allen, and Phillips, the front three for Georgia Southern linebackers. Jason Neese is the leading tackler. Harrow, Youngblood, and Jones. And the secondary for Georgia Southern, Thomas, Hayden, Moreland, and Thompson. And it's now third down and a long two for the Redbirds. It's going to be the big train. Walter James, he gets to the outside, and he's going to get the first down for Illinois State before he's finally pushed out of bounds just after getting that first down by about a yard. 
If you're not familiar with Illinois State's offense, you're going to see a trio of running backs right here. On this play, you're going to see Walter James pick up four or five for the first down. They also throw Avion Case on and number 23, Willie Watts. So if you're not familiar with ISU's football, you're really going to watch, like to watch those three running backs. Certainly, the depth of the Redbirds has been a factor all year long. And the fact that Dusty Burke was the quarterback, he started the uh, number three on the depth chart back in August as they're calling for a measurement. But at least from this vantage point, it looks like he's got it. And uh, Kevin Glenn, the All-American quarterback, <laughs> goes down uh, in the Indiana State game back in October. And they bring Dusty Burke off the bench, and all he does is help march this team to the playoffs. Isn't that amazing? I mean, the kid comes out of a 1A program in Illinois, at Tuscola, Illinois. Throws. I don't know if no, everybody's familiar with Dusty Burke, but he was quite a high school player. He threw for 4,800 yards and 48 touchdowns his senior year in high school. So he was an unbelievable player. He's one of the USA Today Players of the Year. This kid has a lot of talent, and he's getting his opportunity. And what I like, he's taking advantage of it. Indeed, the measurement proves that it is a first down. And the Redbirds have their first first down of the afternoon. The, bo the ball is spotted now at the 43-yard line, and now it's no longer a double tight end offense. The Redbirds have three receivers, and it's Burke back to pass, and he comes to the near side to James, and he's wrapped up immediately and pushed out of bounds. Three tacklers in on that play for jo Georgia Southern, and it was Kiwaki Thomas, the cornerback, who came up to make the initial hit. Yeah, Kiwaki Thomas is one of the guys they're talking about that's an NFL prospect, one of the cornerbacks. The other one as well, Earthwind Moreland. They have a pair of cornerbacks that they feel, Coach Johnson feels, that can play in the next level, play on Sunday. They're a couple pair to watch. They are very athletic in the defensive secondary. And built similarly, each about 5'10", 180 pounds. Both are seniors. And they're on the corners for the Eagle. It's second down now and one the red uh, one yard gain so it's second down and nine for the redbirds now and burke under center this time hands up the middle and it's willie watts who breaks through and he shakes a tackle and he gets close to midfield they'll spot it about the 48 yard line well, Freddie Pesqueda on the tackle. That's right. I like the play call right there. Illinois State's shown a lot this year running that counter option. This one, they run a little trap in the inside. Dusty Burke, the quarterback, gives a good fake. And now you'll be faced with third and about four yards for a first down. And this crowd at Paulson Stadium on its feet trying to cheer its defense on. As the Redbirds face their second, third down opportunity, they convert it on their first. 12 and a half minutes to go here first quarter. We are scoreless in this Division One AA semifinal. The winner goes to the national championship game in Chattanooga, Tennessee next weekend. Back to pass again is Burke, and he flares it out to Avion Case. He turns up field. He's got a first down. He's across midfield, pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And again, it's Earthwind Moreland in, in on the tackle. Boy, I like the game plan right now by Illinois State. They're staying well within that game plan, taking what the defense gives you, throw the little flare pass. We saw that a lot last week against Hofstra. You, you have a soft corner out there, we're going to take advantage of it. We're going to throw right in that area. Here's the replay right here. You see Dusty Burke looking off. Just a short route out to Avion Quezon. And really, as we've talked, his speed has really improved these last few weeks. And he loves this situation here, natural grass, warm temperatures. They've really got this grass cut short. It's a fast turf. On play action, it's going to be Burke. He's got a couple of blockers, and he's got some room, and he's got another first down for the Redbirds as he's pushed out of bounds now at the 31-yard line, a kind of a, new, a naked bootleg on that play. That's right. We saw that one last week against Hofstra as well. I'm not sure they're going to run it as much this week. Dusty did bang up that shoulder on a long run last week, if you'll remember, Kurt. But one thing that I want to point out to the viewers, when they do run a play like that, watch how the wideouts block. They are unbelievable how Illinois State's wide receivers block. Ricky Garrett, the very fine senior wide receiver for the Redbirds, is one of the best blockers from the wide receiving position in the country. And on first and ten now, again, it's Burke under center with Walter James, the lone setback, as the Redbirds have three receivers, and it's a quarterback draw that time on a set play, but it's snuffed out that time nicely by Vanselius Allen, the three-time All-American nose tackle for the Eagles. We got to talk to Von Selius last night a little bit. He's really a character. I mean, this is a kid that's going to medical school after he graduates here. You know, academic All-American as well, and he's quite a player. So Teddy Wolf, the offensive center, will have a matchup with Von Selius this afternoon. And studying chemistry. Oh, man. No, thank you. I'm in that industry. I sell <laughs> no, chemicals you. for a living. I know how <laughs> tough it is. But uh, he must be a very bright young man. No gain on the play. Second and ten now for the Redbirds. And we're seeing Dusty Burke out of the shotgun as the... Redbirds line up three receivers to the top of your screen, and it's a set play on the screen pass out now to Avion Case, and he uses those blockers to his advantage and cuts up inside the 20-yard line. It's another first down for the Redbirds. 
Obviously, Illinois State has found something in the game plan that's going to work. They're going to the outside using the speed of Avion Kaysan. And I'll tell you, you see Avion taking a break right there. Very well deserved as Dusty Burke continues to complete passes. It's just amazing. We're going to see the replay right here by Dusty Burke. Just a short pass. You see the wideouts locking on right there. Good blocking. Illinois State another first down. And a first and 10 now for the Redbirds as the ball is spotted at the 18-yard line. And it's Walter James who gets the call, and he's going to spin. He's going to be close to the 15-yard line. It'll be a short game before Eugene Phillips came up and made the play. Kurt, I think we should point out the size advantage that Illinois State's offensive line have averages 293. Georgia Southern's defensive line averages somewhere in the 255 range. So they've got a, you know, quite a size advantage. I look for him to run a little more between the tackles this week. Well, it's really, on paper, the size of Illinois State oh. against the speed of Georgia exactly. Southern. And we'll see which wins out. Second down and eight after a gain of two now. The ball spotted at the 16. And again, Walter James is the lone setback for the Redbirds. And we've got a whistle. We'll see whether or not it was a offensive violation against the Redbirds. Either they didn't get the playoff on time. No, it was a timeout. At that point, Georgia Southern had to call timeout. But the defense didn't like the lineup and uh, immediately called a timeout. So we'll step away. 9.59 to play here, first quarter. We're just underway. Scoreless game between Illinois State and Georgia Southern. For the Redbirds, that's John Lorenny in motion. Roll out, and that's the tight end, Scott Preisker, who makes the catch, but he's immediately wrestled out of bounds by Archie Thompson, the free safety from Savannah, who came up to make the play. Yeah, we talked a lot about the corners, but Archie Thompson is another guy that they think can play on Sunday. He's quite a, a defender in man-to-man -man coverage. He really closes well, as you see right there, against Preisker. You know, it looks like Preisker's got some room to run, and all of a sudden, Archie's right in his face. That was a good play. Now this is a huge down for Illinois State, third and about five. Similar again to the opening drive last week at Hofstra where the Redbirds marched down inside the 15, got bogged down. Jake Strader missed on the 32-yard field goal. The Redbirds have converted on each of their first three third down potentials here in this opening drive of this football game. Burke bobbled the snap momentarily. We got a flag on the play. Whistle dead before the snap. And it's going to be a delay of game on the Redbirds or perhaps illegal procedure. Delay a game is the call. Good call right there. Boy, Illinois State had a play if they were able to run that right there. I didn't get a chance to look at the 25-second clock, but obviously it's down to 0-0. Now that'll back Illinois State up to about the 19-yard line, third and about 10. Word from Youngstown, Ohio, that the Penguins have added a field goal now, and they're on the board, Florida A&M 7 and Youngstown State 3. And again, that's the other Division I AA semifinal, and we'll keep you up to date with the progress of that game throughout the progress of this one. It's now third down and 10 for the Redbirds as the ball's been moved back to the 18. That's Ricky Garrett in motion. Back to pass is Burke. He's under pressure. He sidesteps one potential tackler, throws to the end zone, and it's going to be out of bounds. Oh, they gave, it oh, they a gave him a touchdown. A touchdown that time as John Lorenzi. Lorenzi came up and made the play. Initially, it looked like he was out of bounds. I know we don't have the best angle in the world, but it looked like he was well out of bounds. He must have been able to drag one of his toes in. And Dusty Burke, I tell you, he just continues to be hot, and he finds John Lorenti deep in the end zone. An ad-lib play that time as Burke was chased out of the pocket, but he remained calm, flipped the ball into the end zone. And Lorenti comes up with a big-time catch as the Redbirds convert on their first offensive possession and get into the end zone. And now Jake Strader on to try to tack on the point after. Ryan Spielman the hold. The kick is up and through the uprights. And the Redbirds make good on their first offensive set and drive down the field and get into the end zone. See the replay right here as Steve Castro comes in motion. Dusty Burke is able to scramble out of being sacked right here, and he finds John Laurenti in the back of the end zone right there. What a great catch and a good start for Illinois State. And the two roommates hook up and give the Redbirds an early 7-0 lead over Georgia Southern.
today. Great game so far. Been excited about it all week. You know, Georgia Southern made a little adjustment before the game started. Starter Michael Ward, inside linebacker, been playing uh, the, that package most of the season. They put in Dante Haro, hoping to give him a little bit more speed. But as you can see, the Redbirds able to throw underneath many of the times during that drive with running outside, except for that last touchdown catch. But uh, Georgia Southern looks like they're going to go with that, hopefully give him a little more speed in the defensive backfield for now. Back up to you guys. Thank you, Ernie. The Redbirds started that drive at their own 32. March down 68 yards, capping it off with a dusty berth to John Lorenny touchdown. And now it's Jake Strader to kick, and we're going to see the Georgia Southern offense for the first time. Earth win Moreland back to take the kick at his own five-yard line. He cuts to the near sidelines before he's finally corralled out of bounds. That time, the Redbirds nicely done on coverage as Vito Golson, one of their outstanding special teams players, gets down for the initial hit. That's right. Vito will play a little bit back up secondary, but he's great on the special team, as is Tom Bardwell, number 48, the leader of the special teams. We'll see this wishbone offense, this flex bone offense, the triple option offense it's got about 44 nicknames we'll see it all today that's right I'm, I'm really waiting to see it I you know you hear so much about it all week and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing this offense Greg Hill is the quarterback under center and he's back to pass immediately he throws out the pass is caught by Chris Johnson and he gets out of bounds and he's close to a first down about three yards short I think we need to mention they can throw a little bit they only threw five passes la last week against UMass but Greg Hill is pretty accurate as a pass as a passer and he threw his first one right there for a completion for about seven or eight yards McGrath Scott Bellingrath Williams and Anderson the Eagles offensive line and a good one it's uh, Dedrick Parham and Chris Johnson who just caught that pass Adrian Peterson is the one double-a player of the year Sherrard Freeman and Benny Cunningham are his slot backs and the dive up the middle is going to be very close to a first down. that time is Adrian Peterson the sophomore comes up the middle and it's going to be close to a first down they may have to ask for a measurement here Big hit by number 42, Tim Angston, is long, uh, along with uh, Galen Scott, number 40. Those two linebackers inside are going to have to be active for Illinois State. We have mentioned on a couple of different occasions that Adrian Peterson has earned the 1AA Player of the Year Award. That came out this past week, the Walter Payton right. Award given to Adrian Peterson. And when you take a look at his numbers, Steve, they are nothing short of awesome. It is phenomenal. Year. I mean, the guy has rushed for 34 touchdowns, 2,400 yards if you count the playoff yards as well. It's unbelievable. He's a sophomore. He's a great kid, a great student. They say he's a better guy off the field, which is unbelievable. Redbirds have their four, four, four down linemen and four linebackers. That's their main defensive set, and we'll see it certainly tested today. Last week they were up against the run and shoot. This week they're up against this flex bone offense, as the head coach Paul Johnson calls it. And it was a first down, and this time it's going to be the option play, and it does go to the slot back that time. Sherrod Freeman that time comes up with the carry, but he was harassed that time by the Redbird defense who did a nice job of stretching it out. You've got Cook, Finn, Gregory, and Marcus White up front on the defensive line for the Redbirds who also have four linebackers. Ryan Zicola, who had a big pick last week at Hofstra. Hankston, uh, Angston, I should say, Scott and Smith. And then the secondary with a couple of corners and a safety is Armando Andrade. Sam Young is the safety, and Alfred Corbin is the other cornerback. The overlooked member of uh, the defense for Illinois State is uh, Derek Smith. He had 18 tackles last week against Hofstra. Keep an eye on him. Hill this time keeps, and he's immediately wrestled down that time by Devin Finn, the senior out of Wheaton, six foot seven, 280 pounds, got his big paws on him. That's right, he put a big hit on Greg Hill. Greg comes up limping a little bit, and uh, you like to see your defensive linemen tracking down the quarterback. They've got to play that line of scrimmage tough, and Devin played it there. And now the Eagles are faced with their first third down opportunity of this afternoon. We've got exactly eight minutes to go here first quarter, and Illinois State leads Georgia Southern 7-0 in this national semifinal. It's Hill under center on the option. He keeps, and he's immediately dragged down well short of the first down. He barely got to the 40-yard line that time. Up to make the stop was Ryan Zicola. Yeah, that was all Ryan Zicola right there. He made sure Greg Hill had to stay inside of him. You got more help when you force him back inside. Zicola did a great job there. Now it's fourth and about two. Georgia Southern's going to have to punt the football. Well, maybe not. They still got their offensive unit on the field. So on fourth and two, Paul Johnson decides that he's going to go for it. Unless they're trying to draw the Redbirds offsides, and that's might 
be exactly what they're trying to do as Greg Hill is barking out the calls at the line of scrimmage. Nobody is moving. Greg uh, Hill better be careful not to bob that head. He can get called for a legal procedure himself if he bobs that head. He does it right there. Illinois State uh, will get the football here on uh, fourth down. So on the, d d the delay call, they'll back the ball up five yards, and we'll see our first punt of the afternoon as Scott Shelton is in now to kick for the Eagles. you got to give Paul Johnson credit. He threw everybody a curve by trying to go for it on fourth down. Both coaches actually trying to throw each other the curve. The Redbirds on offense start with a dual tight end offense. Meanwhile, Georgia Southern comes out and throws the ball on first down. The kick was angled out of bounds about the 30-yard line before it was fielded by Zakola, and that's where the Redbirds will start their second offensive possession at their own 30-yard line. Once again, good field position. You like to have it, you know, outside of the 20-yard line at the 30. Great field position. Let's see. We got points out of our first possession. See if with 6.56 left here in the first quarter, if they can get any points out of the second drive. I think it's very important that we keep their offense off the field, and I know Coach Barry talked a lot about that. Walter James is the lone setback for the Redbirds, and he is going to get the call check. That that's really Watts, but he's wrestled out of bounds for a very small gain, if any. He barely got back to the line of scrimmage, and Eugene Phillips was in on that tackle. And indeed no gain, as he had a hard time getting back to the line of scrimmage. Dusty Burke, the redshirt freshman, taking over after the All-American Kevin Glenn was hurt in the Indiana State game. It's his dream to be here. I'm not taking anything away from Kevin because I mean, Kevin deserves to be here as much as anybody. And I, I feel bad that he doesn't have the opportunity to play. But at the same time, I'm thankful that I have the opportunity. And you know, that has always been a dim reminder playing games like this. And he just completed that pass out to Willie Watts, who gets up to the 39-yard line before he's stopped by Arky Thompson. He's going to be short of a first down. It'll be third and short for the Birds. Listening to Coach Paul Johnson uh, from Georgia Southern, he's worried about these short passes that Illinois State throws. They throw a lot of cross crossing routes over the middle, but this one they throw outside to Willie Watts. And once again, Illinois State showing, hey, we got a little bit of speed ourselves. Redbirds have really passed the ball more horizontally than vertically. They've hit a lot of screen passes so far in their first off two offensive sets. The only pass downfield resulted in the touchdown pass to John Lorenny. And on third and short, Burke is rolling out, and he flips it out in the open, and the pass was dropped that time by Jacob Neat. Not quite sure whether or not he would have gotten the first down anyway as he was being pursued that time, but he dropped the ball, and it's going to be fourth down for the Birds. We're going to see a replay of this right there. As Jacob Neat's going to come from his up-back position. He's there on the left wing. He's going to come all the way across the line of scrimmage and get out in the flat. Really didn't get deep enough, as you mentioned, Kurt, to even get the first down. Once again, Jacob continues to wear that pad around his midsection. It looks like he's got a pot belly, but, folks, he's got a pad there uh, protecting some of his ribs and his uh, internal organs. He was battling a little bit of uh, uh, mono earlier in the season. Straighter to kick. And Anthony Williams back to receive for the Eagles. He feels it nicely, cuts to the near sideline. He's trying to generate some offensive room, and he gets pushed out of bounds this time. And there's going to be a late hit that time, as in real late on that was Scott Pricer. Yeah. Might have gotten Scott Cook on that. Was or was it uh, 46? I believe it, Scott Cook. It looked like it was Scott Pricer, okay. who may have had a push out of bounds. Immediately, a pair of flags went up. And a personal foul, indeed, is going to be whistled against the Redbirds. Well, penalties drive coaches crazy. But uh, mistakes like this will uh, drive you nuts, as uh, that's going to give them 15 more yards tacked on to a nice return. Well, the Redbirds took advantage of a penalty to start this game and march downfield. And now Georgia Southern looks to try to cash in on a penalty against the Redbirds also on special teams. The Eagles will start now in very good field position at their own 47. And Hill on the option. This time he keeps, turns up field. He's across midfield before he's finally tackled. Sam Young in on the hit. He's across midfield to the 48. Illinois State's given a lot of looks to uh, Greg Hill, the quarterback for Georgia Southern. They're really crashing down that defensive end. Sometimes they'll just have him hang, you know, make Greg Hill make the decision. And that's tough for a quarterback. You like to have that guy make the decision so you know whether to pull that football or give it. And Illinois State's doing a good job mixing up the, uh, the defenses right now. Hill 
again. Spinning, pitching out to Peterson. He draws some attention. He's across the 40. He's, he is hard to drag down. And a first, time for the, a first down for the Eagles, Galen Scott, among others, in on the tackle. And he's a guy that you really have to gang tackle. That's right. It's the first opportunity, really, that he had any ru room. You're going to see the reverse action by Greg Hill. As the backside guard pulls as well. You got one of the backs out there leading. And watch the run by Adrian Peterson. He just doesn't go down on that first contact. And we've heard a lot about that. Very strong for a guy 5'10", 205. Had a couple of sensational runs last week against Massachusetts in the quarterfinal, a game in which he racked up 333 yards, which is a Division I AA playoff record. And now downfield, throw the pass is tipped, and it's nearly intercepted that time as Greg Hill threw into double coverage. And a couple of Redbirds had the play snuffed out. Alfred Corbin, who leads the team in interceptions, almost got his first in the playoffs. That's right. That's one that I don't think Greg Hill sees. Uh, Alfred Cor Corbin coming from his safety position, and Corbin gets, gets two hands on it. He actually had two looks at it. He had an initial look at it, and when the ball was tipped, he almost had a second look at it, which he could have corralled in as well, Steve. That's right. We'll see it right here as Greg Hill has to go to his second option, gets a little bit of pressure by Finn up the middle, and that's actually Sam Young right there, number 30, that had the initial chance to make the uh, uh, interception. And so it's now second and 10 for the Eagles at the Illinois State 39. Spinning out of the option, it's Hill. He flips to the near side. He's got Cunningham, who's in the opener. I should say Freeman, and he's down near the Redbird 20 before finally he's taken down by Sam Young. This offense is relentless, Kurt. We talked a lot, a lot, a lot about it. They just keep coming at you. They're not going to change their plan. If you know they're down, doesn't matter what the situation is on the field. If it's fourth and 20, they're going to run the option. And on this play, they have a lot of success from the field level. You'll see a lot of running room on the outside. Illinois State, everything got sealed up on the inside. Big gain for Georgia Southern. And a first down for the Eagles now as they've marched down to the 20-yard line of the Redbirds. And Hill hands this time to Peterson right up the gut. He's stuffed up, but not before a gain of four yards. You know, one thing I've noticed in the offensive line of Georgia Southern, watch their stance. It's a real contrast in how Illinois State's offensive linemen are. They're down in a track stance. They got that one foot back. They are ready to go. Illinois State's offensive line, a little more on the heels, pass protecting. And uh, I like how Georgia Southern's O-line gets off the ball. They just get after it. Not very big, right, but very mobile. Second down now and six. And the pitch comes to the near side. It's Benny Cunningham before he's finally dragged out of bounds again by Sam Young. Right inside the Redbird 10, and it'll be another first down. Well, we talked a lot about this offense putting pressure on the linebackers. It puts a lot of pressure on the defensive secondary as Sam Young's got to come up and make a tackle. If you're a second late, they're gone and they're past you. Sam did a good job to get him out of bounds right there, but now it'll be first and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. And a big stiff arm that time from Benny Cunningham, the senior. 5'11", 200-pounder. So many options, so many weapons for this Georgia Southern offense which, as we said at the top of the broadcast, is averaging better than 50 points a game. And hit, here's Hill again. He's going to keep it. He's going to get into the end zone untouched. Well, you, you have to concentrate so much on Adrian Peterson as Greg Hill right here. Just reverse option one more time. And number 37, Derek Smith, is forced to go out on the running back. As you see his head just flash across the screen. screen. Greg Hill goes in untouched. Georgia Southern's right back in the football game. This is a guy that's been averaging better than 100 yards rushing on the ground, too. So we <laughs> talk a lot about Adrian Peterson, but don't forget that quarterback can run with the football as well. The extra point is up and good. And we are all not a good football game. Georgia Southern answers Illinois State, tying this football game at seven. Illinois State seven and Georgia Southern seven. Ernie, what do you got for us? Guys, after that first uh, touchdown by Georgia Southern, you know, Illinois State's doing a great job of containing the middle, trying to shut down Adrian Peterson. Uh, he's a sophomore running back, and he doesn't know what it's like to not rush for 100 yards in a game. The only problem is sometimes it opens up things on the outside for Greg Hill. Greg threw for two touchdowns, uh, ran for another four in the first round playoff game against uh, Northern Arizona. Back to you guys. Indeed, Adrian Peterson does not know what it's like to be held under 100 yards. He's played 28 collegiate football games, and in all 28, he's rushed for better than 100 yards. And we mentioned last week, chalked up 333 yards 
in that playoff victory over the University of Massachusetts. Yeah, that's unbelievable. All 28 of his collegiate games, he's rushed for over 100 yards. You just don't hear that. And he's averaging 165 yards a game rushing. So, I mean, he really can put up the numbers. But right now, it's the Greg Hill Show. Chris Chambers will kick off for the Eagles. And back deep to receive will be Avion Quezon. 7-7 seven, seven football game, 3.43 here to go in the first quarter. Kick over to the far corner and into the end zone where Quezon will take a knee and the Redbirds will start at their 20. Good decision by uh, Avion right there. Very deep in the end zone in the corner. Just down that one, take it at the 20. We should mention that Avion Quezon did take back two 100-yard returns this year off of kickoff. So he's very exciting and he hates to do that. I've talked to him about it and he doesn't like to have to down the football. But that one was a wise choice. Kurt Pegler, Steve Mays with you, our sideline reporter is Ernie Bonestall. We welcome the viewers who are watching us on CSC throughout the Southeast, as well as those back in Central Illinois on CBS 31. 7-7 ball game. Three and a half minutes to go here in the opening quarter, and Dusty Burke takes the handoff and runs across the 20. He's near the 24-yard line before he's finally tackled by Jason Meese, the leading tackler by the Eagle defense. Surprised a little bit that Dusty's come out running as much as uh, he has. He was very sore after that Hofstra game. Took a big hit in last week's playoff game. That shoulder was really bothering him. This one you're just going to see. This is a straight run by Dusty Burke. The receiver's locking on out there. Nice block by number 16, Scott Preisker, on the outside. Good pickup on first down. Second and seven now for the Redbirds as it's marked as a gain of three. Avian Quezon is in motion. Nobody in the backfield for Burke. He throws across the middle. There's a flag on the play. John Lorenny, who's already caught a touchdown pass, makes the reception. But there's a flag in the backfield, and that usually means holding on the offense. That's right. They threw it right at the feet of number 62, Chris Van Gorder. We also have a player down on the field right here. I believe that's number 26, John Laurenti, really favoring that right shoulder. Lorenti, as we said, made the touchdown reception on the Redbirds' first drive. But he has been down after making that reception for the Birds. Boy, he's a very valuable member of that receiving core for Illinois State. Comes from Kankakee Bishop McNamara, where his father was a longtime coach up there, won quite a few state championships. We're going to get a chance to see the replay. We'll see if we can pick up how John Laurenti is injured. As you see, Coach Barry also on the sideline, very concerned. Well, he's been splitting time with... Jacob Neat. Neat probably came in as the starter back in training camp, and Lorenti actually beat him out for that starting position. And with Neat battling uh, mononucleosis and, uh, and a finger injury, Lorenti was able to steal some of the minutes away, and he has played very well in his, in his role. That's right. He came out in that first game against Truman State at 10 receptions. Here's the replay, and uh, let's see exactly how John Lorenti, oh, he does go down hard on that shoulder with a lot of weight, and he's still down on the uh, field. Kathy Schneed, when the trainer for Illinois State is on the field attending to John. We always joke with Kathy Schneed when she's the head trainer. She says that she loves her job, but she doesn't want to be seen on television <laughs> because that means that she's out nursing one of those student athletes. She does a great job with the Redbird football team, and she has helped John Laurenti to his feet, and he is walking off, and it's a good sign at least that he does not appear to be favoring either one ankle or anything. He's limping not necessarily really actually limping. He's just kind of going off on his own power now. Get a slow-mo look here at the end right there. Look at all that weight. There's four players on top of Laurenti. All that weight went down on his shoulder. He did come down very hard and has walked off the field. Attack that penalty on the plate. It's now second down and 16 for the Redbirds as they're deep in their own territory at the 14. Quarterback draw. Burke hangs onto it, gets to the 20-yard line, so he's back to about the original line of scrimmage. It's a play we haven't seen from Georgia Southern's offense right as of yet, but Illinois State likes to run that quarterback draw as well. You're going to see this quite a bit this afternoon. A lot of pressure from the outside, so tuck it up underneath as Dusty Burke once again picks up nice yardage. And so third down and 10 yards to go for the Redbirds and the fans here at Paulson Stadium get on their feet to back this Eagles defense. Out of the shotgun is Burke. 
Screen pass set up now to Steve Castro, who's tackled, he spins, and he gets to about the 27, but Arky Thompson wasn't fooled on the play, and he came up to make the initial hit. Castro had a great game last week against Hostra, catching two touchdown passes. That's his first reception of this afternoon. That's right. This is the play that he had a big 44-yard gain last week against Hofstra, as you mentioned. And uh, we call it rocket screen. You can call it quick screen. You can call it whatever you want. But they like to get the ball very quickly over the middle to one of those wideouts. That one didn't work as well as they thought. So on fourth and three, the Redbird punting unit is on. It's a 7-7 ball game as we approach the one-minute mark left in this opening quarter here. Burke is standing over center, but now backs off. And it'll be Jake Strader back now to kick. That wasn't Dusty Burke, that was the up, up back, but it was a very short kick that bounces out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. Jake Strader must have kicked that one off the side of his foot because he got no distance at all on that one. Well, it's going to end up, what, about a 15, 16 yards? Not very far. That one went right off the side of the foot. I know how bad that feeling is. I punted at Illinois State for four years, and that's a bad feeling. It's really a perfect day to punt. Slight wind into him, but that's one he just mishit. So for the second consecutive possession, the Eagles will start in very good territory. They started at their own 47 last time and marched downfield 53 yards for a touchdown. Here they start at the Redbird 46, and it's Greg Hill who already has a touchdown under his belt, under center. He spins out and pitches to the near sideline. It's Adrian Peterson. He gets to the sideline before he's tackled by a couple of Redbirds, pushed out of bounds that time by Sam Young. Well, it seems like they're starting to exploit something on the right-hand side of the defense for Illinois State as Greg Hill continues to go there. Good replay look here from the end zone as Peterson. Watch him hesitate a little bit and then put a nice pop on Sam Young. I like to see that. Very physical kid is Adrian Peterson. We're under a minute to go here now. 54 seconds left here in the first quarter. 7-7 football game in this national semifinal between Illinois State and Georgia Southern. The winner to go to the 1AA title game next week. Back to pass now. It's Hill. He's in the pocket. He's not necessarily even looking downfield. He's finally dragged down from behind that time as Damian Gregory gets in on the tackle. That's right. Big Damian Gregory, the transfer from the uh, University of Indiana. Been a big plus for Todd's Berry's defensive line. 6'3", 305, but very mobile. Right there, he stays with it. He actually ran by Greg Hill and was able to get him from the backside. I tell you, defending Greg Hill has got to be a oh. nightmare. He's such a scat back back there, causing all kinds of trouble. But that time, it was Gregory getting his big arm in there to make the tackle. So it's now back to the original line of scrimmage. And again, on the option that time, it's going to be Benny Cunningham who gets the pitch and he gets to the near sideline. It's a nice gain. He's going to be awfully close to another Eagle first down. Armando Andrade up for the stop for the Redbirds. It'll be third and one as there's eight seconds left in this quarter, but likely we'll see one more play here. Check that. We likely won't because now they started the clock. I thought perhaps they spotted that ball out of bounds, but we're done with the first quarter of action. A good first 15 minutes. The Eagles and the Redbirds. Each draw blood. 7-7 our tie after one here in the National 1AA semifinals at Georgia Southern. up the middle and he picks up a big first down for uh, Georgia Southern first quarter statistics break out this way first downs Illinois State and Georgia Southern both have five net yards rushing Illinois State 41 Georgia Southern 83 passing yards Illinois State 57 Georgia Southern eight some individual stats Georgia Southern Adrian, Adrian Peterson four carries for 26 yards Dusty Burke leads for Illinois State four carries 24 yards first and ten now for the Eagles Hill the pitch to the far side Benny Cunningham is wrestled down nicely done that time by Sam Young who stepped up and made the big hit for the Redbirds. Well, I think Sam was getting a little bit tired there at the end of the first quarter. He wasn't getting up as upfield as quickly right here on this play on the end zone replay. We're going to see watch Sam Young and the yardage that he covers really comes up and makes quite a play. Dangerous pitch right there by Greg Hill on the outside. That's how you got to defend the option. Cunningham has been a weapon so far for Georgia Southern as well, but he was stopped that time. It'll be second down and seven. And Hill, this time keeps, but he's going to be wrapped up inside the 10-yard line that time. Stopped at the nine. 
David Bull in on that tackle, along with Galen Scott. You're going to see David Bull uh, Reese come in there and play defensive tackle, giving uh, Damian Gregory and Devin Finn a little bit of break inside. David Bull came back from an injury last week at Hofstra and played pretty well. And so now Georgia Southern will be faced with a third down and three inside the Redbird 10. Now that ball is spotted right about the nine yard line. 7-7 seven, seven our score here early second quarter. Big play now on third and three. Hill keeps pitches. Cunningham and he's wrapped up. Nicely done that time by Young again. Almost the same play. Yeah, exact same play. That's putting a lot of responsibility on your defensive secondary, but Sam's the leader back there and made a nice play. Came up and stopped him short of the first down. Now fourth and about two. Great play by Sam. You see right there showing a little bit of speed himself. Puts a nice hit. And now Georgia Southern will be forced to go for it on fourth down. Fourth down and two now. Now you got to imagine they're going to give the ball to Adrian Peterson. How do you stop him two for two, only two yards? Let's watch and see what happens. Well, they line the wide receivers out. Arum and Johnson. And it's Hill. He keeps and he's stopped. Well, that's Galen Scott. What a hit. What a big turnaround for the Redbird defense. Georgia Southern marches inside the 10-yard line and is stopped cold on fourth down. Yeah, you see Galen Scott right there on the sideline, number 40. He actually played against Greg Hill in high school. Greg Hill's team down there in Pensacola area, or Orlando area, beat uh, Galen Scott's team, but you're gonna see the collision right there. Galen really comes up and fills that hole nicely. The report from the sidelines is that John Lorenny, who was hurt on the Redbirds' last offensive possession, has a separated right shoulder. He's being iced right now, and his return is possible. But the Redbirds now start without him. First and 10, deep in their own territory. The handoff goes to the inside. Avian Quezon gets the call. It was Freddie Pesquita who came up and made the hit, the initial hit for the Eagles. Michael Youngblood also contributing to that tackle. A short gain for the Redbirds, and it'll be spotted just outside the 10 now and be second down and seven. If you're an Illinois State fan right here, Kurt, you'd like a little 95-yard drive if you could, 93-yard drive, whatever it would be. They need to get this ball out from within their own end zone. Burke is back to pass on second down. He floats the ball up to the near sidelines. Avion Quezon juggling catch, and it's going to be spotted. A tremendous one-handed catch that time by Avion Quezon. They'll spot the ball at the 33, and it's a first down for Illinois State. Wow, what a play. Boy, what a great catch by Avion Quezon. Juggling with one down the sideline. Pulls it in one hand. Big break for Illinois State. Love a chance to see a replay on that one. It looked like he was juggling that football. The Redbirds love to do this play. You know that, Steve, where they put that running back out there in the flat and try to flip him the ball with that speed. That's right. They isolate him on a linebacker out there. Dusty does a good job just lobbing that ball up. Let's see. Well, the official's going to give him that left foot being in bounds. A tremendous catch that time for Kaysan and a first down for the Redbirds. They have some breathing room. And now it's Walter James who goes across the 40, but there's a flag on the plane. It's in the Redbird backfield. Jason Neese on the tackle, but it could be a holding call against the Redbird offense. Yeah, thrown at the feet of uh, number 80, Steve Castro. I believe he's going to get caught for holding on the outside. It's, that is the indication. Tough break for Illinois State. It's going to back him up 10. Immediately we're seeing a trouble spot for the Redbirds that they didn't experience last week, and that was penalties. Last week they played pretty much error-free game at Hofstra, but so far already whistled for a couple of costly turn or uh, penalties here. Yeah, really the two playoff games they've played, uh, we've done them both. I've been at both the games, and uh, they've been penalty-free this afternoon. They've had three major infractions, and it's really cost them some nice yardage. So march the football all the way back now to the Redbird 23-yard line. Where it'll be... <laughs> A long, long way. The first and 19 now for the, for the Redbirds, and that negated a nice game by Walter James. And James is the lone setback now with Burke under center. Troy Hunter in motion. Fake pitch. Pass to the near sideline to Scott Preisker, who's immediately dragged down that time by Kiwaki Thomas. 
Georgia Southern be very happy to just give you this play right here. It's not going to be a big gain. There's a lot of pressure put on Dusty Burke on the outside. It's going to take a big hit after the play. Pritzker is able to turn it up and pick up a couple yards, but now you still got second and a whole bunch. Second and 14 now. The ball spotted at the 28-yard line as the Eagles' defense snuffed that play out. Four, four alignment this time on defense for the Eagles. Pump fake by Berkey throwing downfield. That ball was almost picked off as Arky Thompson was the closest man to that ball. Well, first pass play uh, thrown in the uh, direction of Ricky Garrett, the leading receiver for Illinois State, number 18. You're going to see man coverage on the outside. Georgia Southern runs a lot of defense man free. You see that free safety. He just roams anywhere back there. Had a lot of help right there. Dusty Burke just overshot him. And so the Redbirds will be faced now with a third down and 14 at their own 28-yard line. And Willie Watts leaves the Redbird lineup. And Avion Kaysan comes in in this passing situation. And the Redbirds will line up out of the shotgun. Burke back to pass. He has time. He goes over the middle. He's got Jacob Neat for a first down. He caught that ball in traffic before he was finally wrestled down. He lost his helmet but held on to the football. <laughs> Smallest guy on the football field right there, Jake Neat. Runs a little dig route, deep dig route. Had to get the first down. As you mentioned, Kurt, it was second and 14 yards. He's going to pick up about 16 or 17 for the first down. Took a huge hit at the end of that play. It's funny to look out there and see Jake Need in it with that big pad around his belly. Yeah. Looks like he goes about 240. Under 11 minutes to go here in the first half. Good football game thus far. Georgia Southern and Illinois State knotted at seven in this national 1AA semifinal. And now on first and 10. It's Willie Watts. He's going to throw back if he can get the ball off. He stays on his feet. And he's dragged down out to 45. It'll be a loss of two. Mike Youngblood in on that tackle. It initially looked like he was going to throw the ball back across the green to the quarterback. Yeah, very smart that he didn't throw it. Kiwaki Thompson, number two for Georgia Southern, did not bite on the fake, and he was in the face of Dusty Burke. If that ball is thrown, it's going to be picked and could go the other way. We might see the, the bottom of this. You see Dusty Burke go to the bottom of your screen. He is out in a route, and Kiwaki had him covered just... Really what you can do, Willie Watts has got to get the yardage you can. So a loss of two now for the Birds. And back out of the shotgun now is Burke. He's throwing downfield. He's looking for Scott Pricer, and he overshoots him. And back on coverage that time was Arkey Thompson. You know what I'm noticing right now is Dusty's getting some time. Illinois State's offensive line, when we talked about how big they are, they can move as well. They don't give up many sacks, only 16 on the whole year. And that's pretty good playing in a gateway conference, you know, one of the top one double-A conferences in the country, in my opinion. And another third and long for the Redbirds, who converted on their last third down and 14 on the pass to Jacob Neat. Balls at the 45, and this time it's third and 12, and again out of the shotgun, it's Dusty Burke with Avion Kaysan back there for him. And it's Burke. He's in trouble. He's sacked. That's number 58, I believe. Freddie Pesquita was in on that play, as was yes, Corey, Corey Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks. Right. Just a second, we talk about no sacks. We're going to see the replay right here. Corey just runs around the outside. I'll tell you, Mike Van Gorder, number 62, is having a little problem with him. That speed is tough to block. And the defense this time responds for Georgia Southern. The Eagles fans on their feet applauding that defense as it comes off. And Strader is again back to kick for the Redbirds. Got good pressure that time. Fielded by Anthony Williams. He cuts right up the middle. He's got speed to burn. He gets to the far outside, and it's finally dragged down by Ryan Zacola. Big, big return that time by Anthony Williams of Georgia Southern. Yeah, you talk so much about their speed right there. That just killed Illinois State. Here's the replay. Good blocking. He gets to his wall. Middle return, then goes outside. Big return. Good field position for Georgia Southern. The freshman gets the Eagles in great shape when we come back. Like 
Well, you know, that last game I didn't really play, you know, as hard as my ability or the best of my ability. Back to live action and a big play for Benny Cunningham off the option. He takes the ball to the Redbird 10-yard line. A 32-yard gain. That's right. We talked so much about how Illinois State's wideouts block. Watch the blocking on the outside for Georgia Southern as Alfred Corbin, number 32 for Illinois State, gets all tied up with one of the uh, wide receivers, and that's a huge gain. Now at the 10-yard line, first and goal. And Cunningham did a nice job of just corralling that ball initially. He looked like he might be dropping that, but got the ball in good position, and now Georgia Southern has the ball at the 10-yard line of Illinois State, and it's Hill who keeps this time, and he stopped up. A couple of Redbirds were in on that play and stuffed it out. Edgar Biddle's in on that tackle. Little help from Galen Scott as well, number 40 for Illinois State. Devin Finn, a lot of Redbirds in on that play. Greg Redbird Hill secondary has has stepped up uh, and, and made a lot of tackles here this afternoon. That's Steve. right. You can see Greg Hill takes a big hit. He gets up limping again. He's bothered by a little bit of a sore knee or something. I'm not sure, but he's been banged pretty hard a couple times. Short gain. They'll call it a gain of two to the eight-yard line now. Hill, quarterback draw. He's going to keep it. He's going to be snuffed out that time. The Redbird defenders led by Davey. It's now third down for Georgia Southern. Yeah, first attempt right here at the quarterback draw for Georgia Southern. Illinois State and big number 73, David Bull. Don't bite on that one. Big loss back to about the 11 yard line. Now you got third and goal from the 11. Not a situation that Georgia Southern likes to be in right here. Really, it's pretty much a passing down, but let's see if they stay with that option run. Peterson is the lone setback. It's Hill to pass. He rolls out. He throws for the end zone. Intended that time for Chris Johnson, but it's out of bounds in the back of the end zone as the Redbirds had the play covered. They really did. I think he could have gotten defensive pass interference, but the ball was not catchable. Greg Hill threw it out of the back of the end zone. Now we're going to have a field goal attempt by Georgia Southern. The last time the Eagles were down here, they decided to go for it on fourth down, but this time Paul Johnson sends Chris Chambers out as he'll try the short field goal attempt. This one will be a 28-yarder. You will notice that he has got that pinky bandage bandages up. We saw in the injury report, he's battling a bad pinky finger. I can't believe they put that on the report, but uh, he puts that field goal up and through. He missed it. Chris Johnson oh. got the spot down, but Chambers misses the short field goal, and we stayed 7-7 seven, seven tied with 7-0-1 here to go in the first half. Statesboro, Georgia. Yeah, he's been very active. I'll tell you, I like the defense right now by Georgia Southern. They are really stacking up. They're putting eight men in the box, going man-to-man -man coverage on the outside against the three Illinois State receivers, and they are shutting down the running game for Illinois State. Here's the replay right here. Look at that penetration by the defensive line. And, uh, Walter James had nowhere to go. Mike Youngblood also in on that tackle for the Eagles. It's a loss of two, and on second and 12 now, it's Burke who hands up the middle this time, and it's Walter James who gets across the 20-yard line to about the 22. Michael Ward, who's from nearby Savannah, comes up and makes the stop now for Georgia Southern. Redbirds once again will be faced with third and long. Yeah, they've had quite a few of these. Dusty Burke, after having seven for eight in the first quarter uh, for 57 yards, is missed on his last three. Let's see if they can con convert a third down. Third down now and eight for Illinois State, which lines up three wide receivers to the near side, and Burke is back to pass. He fakes the screen, and he's going to go down as the play was snuffed out that time by the Eagles defense. And Vonsellius Allen, the three-time All-American nose tackle, had a little help from LeVar Rainey, who's in on nickel coverage for the sack. That's right, Kurt. Good call. LeVar Rainey comes on a corner blitz. They lock up and man, got a free man to blitz. LeVar came in from the outside. Forced Dusty to step up, and Von Celius there once again. So the Georgia Southern defense pins Illinois State deep in its territory after this is a sack. Burke initially tried a couple of times to look to the near sideline, but that play was snuffed out. So the Redbirds are forced to punt now. 
And standing in his own end zone is Jake Strader. And he gets the kick away. And it's a big kick oh. this time. He says Anthony Williams all the way back to the hard line. He cuts to the near sideline before he's finally dragged down that time by Vito Golson. And what a big kick for Jake Strader. Well, that was unbelievable. That was a bomb. I think that was about 55 in the air right there by Jake Strader after shanking his first punt this afternoon. What a time to come up yeah. with a long punt. He's being congratulated for that big kick on the Redbird sideline, and they needed something to get out of their own territory. Well, Georgia just, Southern will start at the 30. Yeah, that's just part of the inconsistency in the punting game and the kicking game this year for Illinois State. Jake will kill one one time. Next time we'll come back and shank it. But right there, he was able to come up with a huge punt. On first down, it's Adrian Peterson, whose number didn't get called at all in the last offensive drive. He's to the 35. It'll be a gain of five. say 425 now and counting left here in this first half both teams scoreless in the second quarter after each got into the end zone in the first quarter 7-7 seven, seven our score Hill keeps this time he was being chased that whole time that time by Devin Finn and Finn caught it yeah Devin did a great job to stay with that play right there as Greg Hill really has nowhere to go here he runs the option you see Devin Finn just spying outside he stays with it look at big number 96 track him down right there you know what I find is amazing I'm looking through this in uh, Georgia Southern with all the talent they've had come through this team they only have one player playing the NFL isn't that amazing I mean, with all the speed and talent they have down here Peterson gets the call he's going to be very close to a first down we should probably mention that one player is Fred Stokes. He played for the Washington Redskins back in 91 when they won the Super Bowl. But you think of guys like Tracy Ham, you know, he's a legend down here at Georgia Southern. It's hard to believe these guys couldn't play in the NFL. Yeah, Ham playing in the CFL right, right. now. Ham, the quarterback who was partly responsible for those four championships in the uh, late 1980s uh, and early 1990s. They had the championships here in 85, 86, 89, and 1990. Well, they were hot there for about five or six years. And a first down by the Mills of the football. And Adrian Peterson is hard to stop. And he gets the first down for the Eagles. You know, getting back to those national championships, as you can imagine, those were the questions that were posed to Coach Barry all week. How are you going to stop them? National championship. He goes, I believe it's 1999, and I haven't seen him win a national championship in nine years. He goes, we respect that, but we can't fear it. Hey, we got a team in our own conference, Youngstown State, who's won four championships in the 90s. We have to play them every year. Redbirds beat him this year in the regular season, basically for the Gateway Championship. On the option that time, it was Mark Myers who got the call, his first carry of the afternoon. He's across midfield, in fact, at the 45-yard line before he's finally pushed out. It'll be another first down for the Eagles. Boy, what a wizard Greg Hill is with this option offense as he's really nursing an ankle injury or knee injury right now. But look at that. Doesn't even have to look where he's pitching that football. Knows that that pitch relationship is always going to be there, and they are able to get outside on Illinois State one more time. Youngstown State's in the end zone for the first time, and scoring in Florida A&M's lead is now just seven at 17 10 in that other national semifinal there late in the second quarter in Youngstown Ohio here Hill is back to pass he's got a wide open receiver in Johnson who's going to be down at the one well they keep hitting you with that option keep hitting it up in there give you the same look and right here Greg Hill makes a great fake and this one could have gone for a touchdown the wideout will fall down on the one-yard line as Ryan Sokola, number 12 for Illinois State, has to get back. Boy, they're knocking on the door one more time. That's even inside the one-yard line, about a foot away from Pater. Well, that's the reason why this offense is so potent. Run, 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 then throw the ball downfield. We have to yeah. mention that Greg Hill is the first player in 1AA history to rush for 3,000 yards and pass for 3,000 yards in the career. And Adrian Peterson is over on the right tackle for a touchdown. Boy, he makes it look so easy. He just walked in right there. Basic option, dive option play. Adrian Peterson goes in untouched. And they brought Corey Middlebrooks, who's a defensive uh, player, a linebacker in, who helped block that time for Peterson and the touchdown. Yeah, we've heard about that, that they'll put Von Celius out back there as well for a little push up front. They got a nice push and got the touchdown. 
Now it's going to be the point after for Chris Chambers. For the first time this afternoon, the Eagles are in front. The point after is good, and Georgia Southern now leads Illinois State 14-7 with 2.55 to go till halftime. and 0 at home in the playoffs. You ask why? Well, the fans would like to take a lot of credit for that. That's why they call this place our house. But I talked to Roger Inman. He takes care of the field. You know, one reason might be Georgia Southern loves to recruit a lot of speed. Five-eighths of an inch. That's how that's how short they cut it. I talked to Roger. He told me they did not cut it any shorter for this game, but a lot of fields are about a half inch. Five-eighths of an inch. And if you have a team with a lot of speed, it can surely go to their, go to their benefit, guys. We played on putting greens about <laughs> <laughs> cut about that uh, length. Short kick this time, and one of the upbacks for the Redbirds picks the ball up. And before he's finally dragged down, that was Walter James who made the play, and Tom LaRocco who made the hit for the Eagles. Certainly is a fast track. We saw him cutting it yesterday after practice. <laughs> Field is in great, great condition, great shape, and as Ernie said, when you recruit speed, you want to have a speedy turf. That's right, and I was surprised to tell you, I was talking to the sports information director. He says the field looks the worst it has in all year. They got an early freeze about two weeks ago, and it killed a lot of the Bermuda grass, but uh, hey, I'll tell you what, it's a fast track, and it looks pretty good to me. 2.46 here to go. The Redbirds have all of their timeouts left in this half, and they trail 14-7. Dusty Burke is back to pass. He's in trouble. He lost the football. It's a fumble, and recovered that time by the Eagles, as it was Eugene Phillips who picked up the loose ball, and Georgia Southern is in great shape again inside the Redbird 15. Freddie Pasquita made the hit, and Eugene Phillips made the recovery. Yes, he did. Eugene Phillips stays with it as Dusty Burke this is one thing that Dusty's going to learn. He's only a redshirt freshman. This is one you just got to take the sack and go on to the next play. He tries to make a play that just isn't there. I think he saw something late that he was going to throw. But now, right now, Georgia Southern knocking at the door one more time. Wait, an unbelievable what turnovers do. I'll have to tell you, especially in the red zone. Hill hands to Peterson, who goes right up the gut. He gets inside the 10-yard line before he was finally submarine that time by Damian Gregory. Turnovers are something Illinois State hasn't had this whole playoff season until then, and uh, that one really was in an untimely fashion at 2.17 left to go here in the second quarter. Halftime now in Youngstown, Ohio, where the Penguins of Youngstown State trail Florida A&M 17-10. Up the middle again, it's Peterson. He's going to be inside the five. Galen Scott makes the hit. He's going to be very close to a first down, but it'll be third and short now for the Eagles. Here we're 14-7 in favor of Georgia Southern. You see the time under two minutes to go here in the half. This is one of the 1AA semifinals. The other one is going on in Youngstown, Ohio. The winners will play next week in Chattanooga, Tennessee for the national championship. Redbirds trying to get their defenders on and off the field quickly. Boncelios Allen, the defensive nose tackle, back in at one of the running back position, as well as outside linebacker Corey Middlebrooks. They bring them in and stack uh, Adrian Peterson back behind. They were going to give it. Illinois State's going to have to call a timeout. Think about this one defensively. Well, the Redbirds were trying to get players on and off the field on that right. defensive set, and they were about to be whistled for a penalty so quickly they called for timeout, and now they're trying to get the defensive unit over there to huddle with Dennis Thorell, the defensive coordinator. One thirty-nine left to go here in the half. Georgia Southern ahead 14-7, trying to take advantage of a turnover deep in Redbird territory. Dusty Burke just a few moments ago was sacked. And Eugene Phillips came up with a recovery, and now on third and a short two, the Eagles are trying to capitalize. You mentioned Dennis Thorell, one of the defensive, defensive coordinator for Illinois State. I think we should probably mention some of the other coaches for ISU and the great job they have done this year. John Bond, the offensive coordinator. Harold Atheridge, the offensive line. Tucker Wall works with the receivers. And I tell you, these coaches put in a lot of time, but right now they've got to stop a Georgia Southern march. Peterson gets the call, and he's got a first down as he's tackled about the two-yard line. Yeah, he turns around and indicates to Paul Johnson, give me the ball. Give me one more time, coach. I'm down about the two-yard line. It's a first down. They can't stop me right now. 
It looks like they're knocking at the door. I'll tell you, his for forward momentum is just unbelievable. Adrian Peterson, we heard about how quick he was to the line of scrimmage, but he's on top of you before you have a chance to react. He gets the call again, and this time he's tracked down that time by the Redbird defense. Big Devin Finn yeah, right there, Devin 96. Devin Finn, you're right, got his big hand in there and yanked him down for no gain. So it'll be second and goal now. Not many players, we've mentioned this, can stop Adrian Peterson one-on-one. -on -one. Finn did it that time. Clock is running, we're under a minute to go here in this half. Eagles inside the Redbird five, the ball is spotted at the two. Second down and goal. Peterson again the call. This time he gets in. Yeah, he just doesn't stop moving those feet. You see Adrian right there really pumped up. Good surge by the offensive line. Adrian gets into the end zone for another Georgia Southern touchdown. And so the Eagles take advantage of that turnover deep in Redbird territory and turn it into six points. And now on for the extra point is Chris Chambers. This offense is averaging better than 50 points a game. And if you give it an opportunity to attack more points on two turnovers, it will take advantage. The point after is good, and the Eagles lead the Redbirds now 21 to seven with 43 seconds to go in this first half. Well, Illinois State has got to find something to happen on their offense. The last four drives, they've netted no yards. And right here, you're going to see one more time Adrian Peterson with the good push from the offensive line and the block by Big Von Celius Allen, number 99. He was close to not getting in, but the official saw that he got in, and now it's 21-7. Where has Illinois State's offense gone? Well, give credit where credit is due, and the Georgia Southern coaching staff obviously made some changes because Illinois State marched downfield on its first offensive possession and scored, but since that time, it's been a different story. That's right. That's a good sign of good coaching right there. Make some adjustments. But you know what I think? I think they've got the defensive uh, secondary to cover the Illinois State receivers. They've got the speed. They've got the athletes. That's very difficult when they can close as quickly as they can on your wideouts. Dusty Burke just hasn't had time the last three series to throw the football. And now he'll have 43 seconds to work with. The Redbirds are in a position where they really haven't been that frequently here in the playoffs, and that is behind. They were behind momentarily last week when Hofstra scored on its first offensive possession, running that run and shoot downfield. But the Redbir Redbirds really led for most of that game. But here they find themselves down two touchdowns in the second quarter. That's right. This one's serious. You had the feeling against Hofstra that whole game that uh, they were still in control. Right now you're at the point where you're losing control of the game. You haven't been able to stop them defensively. And you got to get something going offensively. Let's see if they can do anything here with 43 seconds left. Chambers will kick from the 35. Avion Case on as the deep back for the Redbirds. It's a short kick. And Case on fields at his own 12-yard line. He's across the 20 before he's taken down that time by Georgia Southern's David Young. And so now there's just 38 ticks until halftime. And the Redbirds will try to squeeze some points on the board and just over a half a minute. And I would imagine that Dusty Burke will probably go down to one knee. But we have seen Coach Barry in situations like that try and hit the home run. But right here, nothing's been happening. I think you just got to go in and uh, regroup at halftime. Burke is out of the shotgun. Three wide receiver set. He floats the ball across the middle. It's caught a completion that time by Jacob Neat. Ryan Hayden in on the hit for Georgia Southern. The clock will stop momentarily while the officials move the first down markers. That is the one benefit in college football that that clock does stop if you get a first down. So they do have time to move it downfield here with 30, 31 seconds left. Second catch on the afternoon for Jacob Neat now who has 49 yards in receptions. Burke again, this time across the middle. Avion Kaysan complete. He makes the play and Michael Ward makes the hit now for the Eagles and the Redbirds call timeout. Stop the clock with 20 seconds to go in the half. That's one.
one you almost wished uh, Avian Quezon does not catch right there. It's going to keep the clock moving at no way to get out of bounds. Force you to call one of your timeouts. Illinois State will now have one timeout left here in this half. And the ball at the, uh, what, 45-yard line, second and six. We should mention that the Redbird place kicker, Jake Strader, has not had many opportunities to kick oh. balls from beyond 40 yards. Right, as you see the replay there of Avion Kaysan, he's only attempted two field goals outside of 40 yards. Right. His long coming at 42 yards. You know what, though? We mentioned the last week in the Hofstra game, he's got the leg. I mean, he can kick from 50 yards. I would imagine with this win, he can kick from 55. A nice little wind at his back. Yeah, he's just one out of two so far this season in field goals longer than 40 yards. So the Redbirds would have to move the ball upfield uh, another 20 or so yards to give Strader an opportunity to tack on three points. It'll be second down now in five, 20 seconds on the clock. The Redbirds have one timeout remaining. Out of the shotgun now, it's Burke. He's back to pass. He's got four wide receivers in the pattern. He's hit from behind and the pass is intercepted that time by the linebacker, Tom Morocco, or Jason Neese, I should say. Neese makes the interception and that stops any effort that the Redbirds have of getting points on the board here at the end of the half. Well, Illinois State ran everybody deep and actually Avion Kaysan was wide open down the middle of the field. If Dusty Burke doesn't get hit, he's got him open down the field. Good pressure once again by Georgia Southern as Von Celius Allen, number 99, puts great pressure on the quarterback. Burke has been under pressure quite frequently this afternoon and he has altered his passing plans and he's intercepted. It's the second Redbird turnover consecutively now on Redbird offensive sets and now with just nine seconds left to go in the quarter, we'll see what happens. The Eagles are looking for more. And Hill's pass is now picked off by the Redbirds. Can you believe that play? We thought they might run the clock out. Devin Finn came up with the interception. Now there's a flag on the play, and he might get whistled for a forward lateral on that play. And that's exactly what it's going to be. But how do you like that? There's one second left on the clock, <laughs> and Greg Hill's pass went right into the hands of Devin Finn. Boy, Devin gets those big paws up right there. Boy, Greg Hill, you just got to go down and have the clock run out. Yeah, he was trying to lateral that football, and uh, that's going to mark it back. Actually, it's going to take Illinois State out of field goal position, I think. Well, just when we thought that the Redbird hopes of putting any late points on the board here at the end of the half were dashed, Devin Finn picks off Greg Hill's pass. It looked like the pass was intended for Adrian Peterson, who was out on the flat. Now they're going to spot the ball right here about the 33. It would be a 50-yard field goal attempt by Jake Strader, and he is actually going to come on and attempt this. Well, at this point, what do you have to lose? Yeah, exactly right, other than the chance of getting it blocked. But, uh, hey, you're down 21 to 7. you got to put points on the board. Now he does have a slight breeze at his back. So with the help of the win, Jake Strader will attempt a 50-yard field goal. His longest on the season is 43. Spielman, the hold, the kick is up, the kick is Plenty of good, right a 50-yard field goal at the end of the half, and that would have made it from about 55, oh, that was he amazing. hammered that one through the uprights. Well, we talked about it, I knew he had the leg from 55, and that was plenty long and very accurate by Jake Strader, what a kick. And Paul Johnson, the Georgia Southern head coach, cannot be too happy. But Todd Berry, the ISU head coach, probably is happy that his team came away with three late points here right before halftime. And he's standing by with our Ernie Bonestall. Coach, I uh, got one back, a big field goal there. Uh, been a pretty tight game except for a couple of big plays. Well, it really has. You know, it, uh, we've had some penalties that have really knocked us back. And then along with, the, you know, we missed a turnover on the ver their opening drive that we had an opportunity to get. Uh, but, you know, we've we got to keep going, and we will. And I know your fans back home, they're wondering if we're going to see John Laurenti come back in in the second half. I would doubt very seriously that he's going to be back. What are you going to tell the team at halftime, Coach? Just that right now we, we haven't played our game yet. Uh, 
our defense has played extremely well. It's been our kicking game and penalties that have really hurt us. And so we've got to do a good job of just rallying up and playing our game here in the second half. I think it was important for both teams just to get in the first half and just mix it up a little. It seems like uh, everybody is still is still working well, on getting that full. Yeah, clicking. there's no question. I mean, that's part of a big game, right? Is you got to get back in, uh, get used to playing again, and obviously get all the nerves out. Thanks a lot, Thank coach, you. and uh, good luck in the second half. Back up to you guys. All right, thank you, Ernie. Todd Berry's team gets three late points on a 50-yard field goal by Jake Strader. And at the half, it's Georgia Southern 21 and Illinois State 10. Halftime at the Division I AA National Semifinals. Part by Sam Lehman Mazda, your first place dealer. Citizen Savings Bank. Hometown Insurance, proud to back the birds. The new Dodge. From cars to minivans to trucks, it's all about change. And your local Bloomington Normal State Farm agents. Twenty-one ten. our halftime score as we get closer now to the kickoff to start the second half of action. The Eagles of Georgia Southern University <coughs> leading the ISU Redbirds 21-10 and Georgia Southern leading in more than just the stat sheet as far as the score is concerned, right Steve? That's exactly right. The stats will spell that out. Uh, first downs were 11-8 to eight, uh, in favor of uh, Georgia Southern. Rushing yards, uh, Georgia Southern 172, Illinois State only 19 yards. Really couldn't get that running game going. Passing yardage, Illinois State 126. Uh, Georgia Southern hits the one big play and uh, they complete uh, for 52 yards. Uh, total offense, Georgia Southern 224, Illinois State 145. Uh, time of possession, Illinois State has the advantage there, 1553, Georgia Third Southern 1407. So time of possession really doesn't tell the story. Georgia Southern got after it in the second quarter. College football this afternoon, NFL football tomorrow. Tune in to CBS 31 tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock as the New York Jets entertain the Miami Dolphins in an AFC East matchup. That's right here on CBS 31. But it's college afternoon, uh, college football this afternoon here, the 1AA National Semifinal. The winner of this afternoon's game here in Statesboro goes to Chattanooga, Tennessee for the National Championship game next week. And right now it's the Eagles 21 and the Redbirds 10. Give you some individual stats as well there, Kurt. Adrian Peterson uh, led the Eagles in the first half, 13 carries, 58 yards. Uh, Avion Kaysan was a leading rusher for Illinois State, three carries for 12 yards. Passing Dusty Burke, 12 of 16. He had the one interception for 126 yards, did throw a touchdown pass uh, to John Laurenti. Greg Hill was uh, two of five passing uh, for 50 yards with his long of 44 yards. Chris Johnson was on the end of that and has both the catches for the Eagles. To start the second half, the Redbirds will kick to the Eagles. It'll be Jake Strader kicking for Illinois State, which trails again 21-10. And back to return for the Eagles will be Benny Cunningham and Earth Wind Moreland. What a great name. Earth Wind Moreland, his mother named him after the R&B group Earth Wind and Fire. <laughs> You gotta love that. Actually, it was mentioned in Sports Illustrated as one of the top names in the country for uh, football players. And we second that. Anthony Williams takes the kick and he gets across the 30 or 25, I should say, to the 26 before he's dragged down by the special teams unit. And Georgia Southern will start the third quarter at its own 26-yard line, ahead 21 to 10. And a slight breeze at their back here, going right to left on your screen. Winds died down just a little bit. It really doesn't help Georgia Southern, as we mentioned earlier. Illinois State will have the win in the fourth quarter. And Greg Hill, the very fine quarterback, again starts under center now for Georgia Southern. They run that flex bone offense. He keeps this time, turns the ball upfield past the 30 to the 32 yard line before he's tackled by Devin Finn. Greg Hill carried the ball 10 times there, Kurt, in the first half for 25 yards, had a long run of 10. Uh, but I'll tell you, the way he was running the option, distributing it to everybody else, was unbelievable. He did have the one touchdown run as well. We've not called Sherrod Freeman's name this afternoon for Georgia Southern, but Benny Cunningham and Adrian Peterson and Greg Hill, Mark Myers, they've all contributed to moving that ball up the middle. It's Hill, and it's Galen Scott snuffing that play out along with Devin Finn. 
Sam Young did a nice job right there taking away the pitch man. Number 36, Benny Cunningham. Hill had nowhere to run, and they were able to finally shut down that option. Now third and about four. No gain on the play. It'll be a long four. We'll call it five yards. Third and five. The ball spotted at the 32. As Paul Johnson sends the play in now. And Hill hangs on, shakes a tackler, and gets to about the 38-yard line, and he'll have a first down for the Eagles. You're right, that last lunge is gonna get him the first down by about a half a football. You're gonna see the lunge right here at the end of the play. That's enough to get the first down, keep the drive going at about the 39. Illinois State has really only seen that wishbone or that flexbone offense just one time this year against Indiana State. The ball goes up the middle this time to Adrian Peterson who drags a couple of tacklers with him. He's past the 45 to the 46 yard line now for Illinois State. Well, that's a nice matchup right there when you see Peterson go in and hit Galen Scott, the middle linebacker for Illinois State. They've got the same build. You can almost hear the collision between these two players. We understand word from the sideline now that John Laurenti the wide receiver from Illinois State injured with a separated right shoulder in the first half will not return now in this ball game. So Lorenti is out. And look at Adrian Peterson bang through that Redford defensive line before finally Sam Young drags him down, but not before another first down for the Eagles. Yeah, another big hand for Adrian Peterson. The crowd just holds their breath every time he touches the ball. He loses himself in that, you know, all the things going on inside, and he, all of a sudden he just squirts out. I don't know if we're going to get a chance to see this one on a replay, but uh, that's quite a run by Adrian. You know, he's got such a low center of gravity that he that's stays on his feet. Hard to keep that man down. He gets the call again, shakes a couple of tacklers. He gets to the line of scrimmage and busts through this time. He's finally dragged down at the 37, and Edgar Biddle's in on a tackle for the Redbirds. Yeah, he doesn't give you much to tackle. That's, that's for sure. It's, you know, shoulder pads and a kneecap, and that's about it. He's just runs low this is a great angle right here good camera work look at that low drive and look at those legs keep running he's running people over that pile always seems to move his way clock running as we approach the 12 minute mark left to go third quarter georgia southern leads illinois state 21 10 here in this national one double a semifinal hill hands this time again to peterson but he's not going to go anywhere as the redbird defensive line didn't move and stuffed him and stopped him right at the 35. A short gain of a yard and a half. Well, the game plan here in the second half is pretty easy to figure out for Georgia Southern. They're going to stick with Adrian Peterson. I mean, they are just hammering inside with him trying to wear out that defensive line for Illinois State. The contingent of Redbird fans that made the trip to Statesboro on their feet trying to cheer on the defense for a potential stop on third and three the pitch to the far sideline and the Redbird defense snuffs it out that time Scott Cook in on the tackle as the pitch play I think that was Andre Weathers it was we, Andre Weathers he was initially listed as number 13 in the program and now is number 87 and there is an eagle on the ground it's Mark Williams one of the offensive linemen Here's the replay right here. Greg Hill does a good job pitching the ball back, but Andre Weathers nowhere to run. That's good team tackling there by Illinois State as you see the player for Georgia Southern walks off underneath his own strength here. Well, they've got some beef as well, don't they, Kurt? They've got some big linemen. <laughs> It'll be fourth down and four now, and the offensive unit stays on the field. The Eagles are 0 for 1 and 4th down opportunities so far this afternoon. But they're not going to go for it. All they were trying to do is lure the Redbirds off sides. They didn't bite. Now Hill has to call a timeout. Well, we've seen a field goal attempted. That'll be a little bit longer than that if they want to take a field goal. But uh, I don't think they will. And we'll go to timeout. We'll step away. 10.57 to go third quarter. 21-10. Eagles lead the Redbirds. guard for the Georgia Southern Eagles, Mark Williams, the right guard, all-conference, all-American. Looks like he wants to play back into the game, not receiving treatment, so I think he's going to be okay, guys. 
Meanwhile, Hill has Ooh. upended that time. Sam Young. Sam Young came flying up and made a big hit that time on fourth down, and the Redbird defense has stopped Georgia Southern on fourth down for the second time this afternoon. Yeah, this is the all-gateway defensive back, Sam Young, coming up with a huge play for Illinois State. Greg Hill, just a simple rollout, can't make the first down. Illinois State, pretty good field position here, Kurt, about 36. Hill rolls out, and he's going to be absolutely erased that time by Sam Young. And now the Redbirds take over on downs. And they'll start at their own 36. Avion Case on the lone setback. And Dusty Burke under center for the first time here in the third quarter. He hands to Case on who cuts up field. He's got a first down and more for the Redbirds across midfield in the 48-yard line before he's finally tracked down by Kiwaki Thomas. Oh, a huge block by number 62, Chris Van Gorder. He just locks on and knocks his defensive lineman all the way down the field. Case on able to get up the field and pick up the first down. Now we got another player down on the field as you see the end of the run by Avion Kaysan. In fact, it's Kiwaki Thomas who was in on that tackle who's down and he's having an ankle looked at. Boy, you don't like to see that. There's an NFL player right there down on the field. And I'll tell you, he had quite a first half. He just covered up the Illinois State receivers there in the second quarter. But he's up on his feet now and heading to the sidelines on his own power. They say, they say he's a legitimate 4-4 man in the 40. He's got enough speed to compete on the, in the NFL. I think he just needs a little bit more strength, a little more experience. He probably can play. Meanwhile, it's first down for the Redbirds. Now the ball spotted at the 49-yard line of Georgia Southern. First offensive series for the Redbirds here in this second half. Again, Kaysan is the lone back. And he gets the call. And he gets close to the 45. It'll be a gain of three before he's finally stopped by Freddie Pesquito. But Kaysan didn't carry the ball very much in the first half. Three carries, as we mentioned, for 12 yards. Came out with a nice run on his first run. Picks up three more there. Let's see if Illinois State can uh, get something going with the rushing game. Second down and seven now for Dusty Burke. The Redbirds run the option this time. He holds it, and the play is snuffed out that time nicely by the All-American, Von Celius Allen. Boy, he works the line of scrimmage well, doesn't he? Absolutely. I'll tell you, the guy can move. You know, you see him outside of his uniform. He doesn't look like, he, you know, that much of a football player other than that he's pretty big. But I'll tell you, he can run. I'm surprised how well he can run. Eugene Phillips got some help in on that tackle as well. And now it's going to be third down and eight for Illinois State and the fans here at Paulson Stadium get up to support their Eagle defense. And out of the shotgun now. It's Burke on third down and eight from the 47. He goes over the middle. It's Walter James. Complete pass, but he's going to be dragged down that time. Short of the first down. Dante Harrow with the tackle. Now, once again, pretty good coverage down the field by Georgia Southern. Really nothing open deep for Illinois State. And a glaring statistic here is Ricky Garrett has no catches. As we see the replay one more time, Dusty's just forced to sh throw short. Everything covered up downfield. Give credit to the Eagles secondary. Their cornerbacks and their safeties have done a nice job of blanket coverage on the Redbirds. Oh, Red man, they have. You know, we've got uh, Ricky Garrett that we keep talking about, number 18 for Illinois State. When he comes in, you know, to the second half with no catches, that's not very positive for Illinois State. They need to get him involved. In fact, they've only thrown the ball in his direction one time this afternoon. Yeah, that's right, the one deep ball. Special teams unit on. Jake Strader gets the punt away. And it takes a fortunate Illinois State hop. It was headed towards the end zone, but it bounced at the five, and that's where it's going to be downed. And Georgia Southern will take over deep in their own territory at the five-yard line. How about that one? Hits about the two-yard line. You get it to back up. Kind of like one of your chip shots there into that <laughs> green, right, Kurt? I wish I could say <laughs> that you was the case. You back it up like that? I wish I could say that was the case, Steve. 8-18 <laughs> to go here, third quarter. It's 21-10 in favor of Georgia Southern in this 1AA national semifinal. Again, the winner of this afternoon's game will play the winner of the Youngstown State Florida A&M game, which right now Florida A&M leads 17-10 in the third quarter. These two winners will meet next week in Chattanooga, Tennessee for the national championship. On first and 10 now for the Eagles. Hill keeps. He's tripped up that time. Ryan Zicola in on a tackle along with Sam Young, but it'll be a gain of about three, yard line, uh, three yards. 
Boy, I love the way Greg Hill runs this. Uh, you know, I'm a longtime fan of Nebraska and Oklahoma and how they used to run the option. He does it just as well. I remember guys like Thomas Lott at OU and stuff. And I'll tell you, he runs the option as, as well as I've really seen. He, he is really an unbelievable athlete. They give him a gain of four, and it's second down and six now for the Eagles. And again, a keeper this time by Hill. He goes right up the gut. He's going to be tackled about the 18-yard line as David Bull is in on that tackle for the Redbirds. Well, you better be pretty durable if you're a quarterback for Georgia Southern. You're going to carry the football, no doubt about that. You're going to run it between the tackles. They run a little quarterback trap right here, and uh, Greg Hill takes another big hit but picks up a couple more yards. And so it'll be third down and three now for Southern Georgia. Georgia Southern, I should say. I tell you, the Eagles, they know how to put points on the board. They've been somewhat held in check. Again, they average about 50 points a game, and they're at 21 right now. But that can change in a heartbeat when you've got Adrian Peterson and Greg Hill on the field. And on third down, the handoff does go to Peterson. He spins. He's tackled. And depending on the spot, he's going to be very close to another first down. Galen Scott in for the Redbirds, the linebacker up to make that tackle. Yeah, that's a guy we've called a lot today, Galen Scott. They're going to give him the call for the first down. We're going to see the replay from ground level right here. Watch the collision with Galen Scott. But once again, Peterson strong enough to stretch out, get the first down. Big, strong player. He gets the first down, and it's a new set of downs now for the Eagle offense. And we're under seven minutes and counting left here, third quarter. 21-10, in case you've just joined us. Georgia Southern leading Illinois State. Back to pass now is Hill. He's throwing to the near sidelines. He's looking for Johnson. He's got a receiver, but he's overthrown. There's no flag. Fans wanted it. Won't happen. Armando Andrade back for the Redbirds. Well, I think the fans are right on that one. Armando Andrade reaches out and grabs the... Uh, arm of the wide out and uh, you see Johnson he's not very happy about that Ernie Bonestell has an injury update for us guys a couple of them for Georgia Southern first of all senior right guard for the Eagles these are all American offensive linemen he's kind of the anchor of the Georgia Southern line he is back in the ball game a little bit of his left knee and uh, Kawaki Thomas number two the senior quarterback looks like he's going to be in the back back in the ball game pretty soon as well thank you Ernie second and ten now and it's Peterson up the middle he gets through, drags a couple of tacklers with him before Edgar Biddle steps in and makes the tackle. It's a five-yard gain for the All-American. It'll be third and five now for the Eagles. What Paul Johnson has done here in his three years is outstanding. 35 wins, just six losses. The National Coach of the Year in 97 and 98 right. has produced 18 All-Americans, and his team is... One victory shy of getting back to the national championship game where they lost last year to UMass. The Redbirds are trying to stop that from happening now. On third down, here comes the option again. Hill keeps. He's stuffed that time by the Redbird linebackers who come up and make the play. Tim Angston oh, in on Angston. tackle along with Edgar Ooh. Biddles. Yeah, big help from Scott Cook, number 46 as well. They both stay home and play their position pretty well. We're going to see the big collision here. See Scott Cook down there, left-hand side of your picture. But look at Angston come up right there. Big hit. That's what you need out of your middle linebacker. David Bull also in on that tackle. The Redbird defense holds that time. And on fourth and three, the punting unit is on. And it's Scott Shelton to kick for the Eagles. And Ryan Zicola is the man back to receive for the Redbirds. short kick and Zicola is going to come up and field it at about his 40. He's across the 45. He's near midfield. He's still on his feet. He drags a couple of tacklers with him and he's into Georgia Southern Territory before finally Nate Gates knocks the feet out from underneath Ryan Zicola. You don't see Zicola call a fair catch very often. He likes to return the football and does it very well. There you see the score. Illinois State trailing 21 to 10 going to see the replay right here. <laughs> this is this is when your punter is out in the open. Yeah, Armando Andrade. <laughs> I used to hate that when I was a punter. People come by and take a shot at you sometimes. You're just standing there all alone, minding your own business. Somebody comes up and whaps you upside the chin. First and ten for the Redbirds right at midfield. Avion Quezon in the secondary. He's got a first down, a gain of 12 yards. The ball will be spotted at the 39 and a first down for the Redbirds. Well, 
Illinois State seems to be finding something right here with a little sprint draw action. Avion Kaysan up the middle, running hard, showing a little burst of speed one more time. Let's see. Illinois State on the move. 439 left in the third. First and 10 for the Redbirds now. Kaysen stays in the game as the lone setback for the Birds. And Dusty Burke under center. Troy Hunter is the wide receiver to the near side. Kaysen again gets his numbers called. This time he stopped up for a short gain. Eugene Phillips in on the tackle, along with Corey Middlebrooks. Boy, Corey Middlebrooks is playing, playing great from his outside linebacking position. You see him get a help up there off the ground. End zone view right here of what Avion Kaysan really sees as a running back. You see Muddlebrooks come in there and put a big pop on him. Redbirds moving the ball on the ground so far here in the third quarter. They've decided to see if they can rush the football, but this time they've got three wide receivers lined up at the top of the screen. On second down and eight, and out of the shotgun, it's Burke. Here comes pressure. He goes over the middle to Steve Castro. The play is snuffed out nicely by Eugene Phillips. A short gain for the Birds. That is a play that Illinois State ran for a touchdown last week That's in New right. York. That quick screen right there. They try and stack everything out on the left side, come back against the grain. Illinois State did not get good protection up front by their offensive linemen. And it'll be third down and long for the Birds. Third and seven as the ball is spotted on the 37. And the Paulson Stadium crowd once again comes to its feet. Burke under center with... Willie Watts, the lone Redbird setback. Jacob Neat goes in motion now. Straight drop. Burke over the middle. And the pass is Ooh. caught by Ricky Garrett before Ooh. he's hammered on a short gain. And Jason Neese came up to make the pop. Boy, he's the emotional leader and tackling leader for Georgia Southern. Really put a nice pop on the wideout. Wouldn't be surprised if Illinois State doesn't go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and about, well, let's call it five, Kurt. You see the pop right there by Nice. I'll tell you, he's a heck of a player. We've seen some good linebackers here in Division I AA, haven't we? We've seen some very good Boy, linebackers. Boy, back at Hofstra, they had quite a player. Yeah, Jim Emanuel. Jim Emanuel, you're week. right. He was an animal. And on fourth and four, the Redbirds have opted to go for it. This is right out of Todd Berry's playbook. He's not afraid at all on fourth down to go after it. But there's a whistle now, and there's going to be a delay. As the Redbirds were trying to draw the Eagles off, and it didn't work. And that'll give five more yards for Jake Strader to try to angle the ball to the end zone. There you see a good look at the crowd here. What a great crowd, great atmosphere for a college football game. I tell you, I like how this stadium is set up. The great press box, great facilities. Certainly a nice facility here for a team that has won four national championships in the past 15 seasons. That helps, doesn't it? That certainly helps. <laughs> Straders kick with nobody back this time to receive. Bounces inside the five, and the Redbirds are going to do it for the second consecutive time. Down the ball inside the five, and that's where the Eagles will take over offensively when we come back. 2-10 to go, third quarter. Eagles 21, Redbirds 10. Leads Youngstown State 17-13 in that other national 1AA semifinal. And here at Georgia Southern University, the Eagles lead the Redbirds 21-10. And again, the winners of these two national semifinals will play next week in Chattanooga, Tennessee for the national championship game. First and 10 from the two-yard line. Peterson gets the call and has a very short gain now as the Redbird defensive line has done a nice job of containing Adrian Peterson the last two offensive sets. They really have. Obviously, as you mentioned, Kurt, they've made some adjustments. That's a sign of good coaching. But uh, unfortunately, the offense is yet to crank it up here in the last two quarters as you see some good gang tackling by Illinois State. Everybody involved on that big tackle. Especially Marcus White, who penetrated from his defensive end position. They'll call it a gain of two. It's second down and eight now. The ball spotted at the Georgia Southern five-yard line. Hill keeps this time. He's across the five-yard line. He's across the ten before he's finally tripped up that time. He has a first down. It was Ben Thompson in on the tackle for the Redbirds. Quickness. It's, it's just hard to stop. You can't teach it. And uh, Greg Hill right there didn't really have that big of a seam, but he was able to slither through. Good end zone shot right here. What your quarterback sees. Good move on Galen Scott, number 40. And Hill takes it upfield. We're going to have a measurement now for first down. He looks pretty close. It 
it seems like on every one of these measurements, the Eagles have received first downs. And that's again the case on this measurement. It's first down for the Eagles as Hill's keeper gives his team some breathing room. And boy, do they need it. That ball is at the 13 yard line. Once again, backed up against their own end zone. I love how they stay with their game plan. I know we've mentioned it a couple times, but they do not panic. You know, man, they just stay within that flex bone offense. And uh, I'll tell you, they run it just to a T. First and 10 now for the Eagles. Ball up the middle goes to Peterson again. He's gang tackled is about the only way that you can contain that man. Short gain, Ryan Zicola up from his inside linebacker position to make the tackle. As we're under a minute now to go here in the third quarter. We've played this quarter without scoring. 21-10 was our halftime score, and 21-10 is our score right now. I don't think we've mentioned, but Adrian Peterson's brother, Mike Peterson, plays for the Indianapolis Colts. So, you know, there's a little bit of a uh, uh, nice bloodline, bloodline there, huh? there. You bet. Hill that time is dragged down by big Devin Finn, who's done that a couple of times, who comes in and drags him down from behind. Mike Peterson is outside linebacker, I believe, for the Indianapolis Colts. We're going to get a replay right there, the right option by Greg Hill. Good play by Illinois State. Now he'll be faced with uh, about a third, about four yards. And this will likely be the final play of the third quarter if, indeed, Georgia Southern opts to run this play. And it doesn't appear that they're going to break out of the huddle. So that will be the final play of our third quarter. And when we come back, we'll start the fourth quarter with Georgia Southern in front of Illinois State, 21-10 in this national 1AA semifinal. Well, that might be the fastest quarter in the... At the 40-yard line as he angles out after a big gain and a first down. Yeah, it's absolutely no match for Marcus White. You saw number seven trying to track down Greg Hill. I tell you, he's just too fast. Look at it, the broken play right here. And Hill just outruns the, uh, the defensive contain. You know what's interesting about Greg Hill? Actually, the play's going to come back. We got a penalty way down here on the uh, line of scrimmage. I didn't see that dropped. Neither did I, but a penalty is going to be whistled against Georgia Southern, and that play is going to come back. One thing that I find interesting we haven't mentioned yet is that uh, Greg Hill was actually the MVP of this conference, the Southern Conference. And Adrian Peterson wins the Walter Payton Award as the Division 1AA Player of the Year. So how does that happen? Today's scoreboard is brought to you by the Bloomington Normal Local 99 Plumbers and Pipefitters Union. They do it right the first time. Well, it's nice to have that kind of weapons yeah. when you've got Hill and Peterson in your backfield. And now it's third and ten. It'll start all over again. Hill is once again back to pass. He's under pressure. He steps up in the pocket. He loses a couple of tacklers, and he has first down yardage and more. He's across the 30-yard line before he's finally dragged down and tackled on the play by Vito Bolson. Yeah, pickup of 20 yards by Greg Hill, and he's just making it happen. It's unbelievable what Greg Hill is doing to Illinois State's defense. Just the minute you think you got him contained, he breaks contain and busts you for a 15, 20-yard gain. His mobility has caused all kinds of headaches for defending teams across the country, and he's doing it to Illinois State this afternoon. Yeah, he's just hard to bring down with just one tackler. And it's first and 10. And right up the gut is Adrian Peterson, and he bangs ahead. He's across the 40 to the 44, and another first down for the Eagles before Edgar Biddles finally trips him up. That carry right there puts Adrian Peterson at 108 yards. Once again, he goes over the 100-yard mark. We've mentioned it. The guy has played 28 collegiate games and gone over the 100-yard mark every single game. And That's just 29. an amazing. Yeah, now 29. You're exactly right. And a first down for the Eagles, who will try to choose some clock. They have a 21-10 advantage over Illinois State in this national 1AA semifinal. And on first down, it's the option play. To the outside is Cunningham. And he's close to another first down. If it's not Hill, it's Peterson. If it's not Peterson, it's Cunningham. Yeah, that's exactly right. This is a nice run by Peters Peterson, his best of the half, actually. Picks up about 12 yards. Watch how physical he is at the end of this run. He's going to run right through Alfred Corbin, number 32. You know, right there, you think you got Greg Hill. He pitches it out. Cunningham is just out on the outside. 
And again, a measurement is being called for as the chains are coming on the field. As the Eagles have marched this ball up deep in their territory, and that big third down play by Greg right. Hill has been the big play so far here on this drive. Well, I know this game is a game of momentum, and right now it is obviously going for Georgia Southern. Illinois State's got to get some type of a turnover, make something happen, come up with a big hit, but they cannot stop the running game right now of the Eagles. It'll be second down and in inches as for the first time this afternoon. The measurement does not indicate a Georgia Southern first down. <laughs> Tawan Hartley, number 56, now in for Illinois State at one of the defensive lineman positions. Those guys are getting a lot of reps, getting pretty tired up front. Well, when you're chasing Hill and Peterson around oh, all afternoon, man. that'll take the wind out of him. These two teams we thought would combine for about 1,000 yards offense as each is averaging better than 500 yards offensively a game. Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> Man, that is a lot of offense. And we've got a 21-10 game in the fourth. <laughs> so <laughs> Tell you what we know about this right. stupid game. 13-49 to go here in regulation. Second and less than a yard now. Hill keeps. First down. And more across the 40 to the 39-yard line. Before it's Vito Golson again in on the tackle for the Redbirds with some assistance from Alfred Corbin. Boy, I love the play right there. He fakes to Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson actually does a little trap blocking, just a token fake you see right there, and that's a quarterback draw by Greg Hill for another first down. And this is exactly what the Eagles want to do, is gnaw on that clock with this 11-point lead and throw all the options at the Redbirds. Keep that Redbird defense on the field. First and 10 now, ball spotted at the 39. Hill slips and he's dragged down that time as Tim Angston came in to make the tackle. On the sack, number 42, Tim Angston. He lost his footing there momentarily and Angston took advantage and dragged him down. Yeah, you see the inside blitz right there by Big Tim. He's able to get to Greg Hill and that, fine, that time he's able to get a couple hands around him and pull him down for a loss. First loss on a play we've seen in quite a while. Ball will be spotted back at the 43. It's a loss of four on the sack by Angston. It'll be second down and 14 now for the Eagle offense. Paul Johnson, the coach for the Eagles, he's pretty animated on the sideline. You should see him up, jumping up and down. I don't know if we can get a camera on him, but he's a pretty fun guy to watch. Back to pass. He'll pump fakes. Now out of the pocket. Throws downfield. Looking for Johnson. Ball is tipped and caught by Johnson. Chris Johnson corralling that ball for a first down inside the Redford 20. You know, that's a great call by the official right there. I don't think he gets either of his feet in, but he's actually knocked out of bounds. And he does a great job hanging on to the ball. Chris Johnson had that big pass play in the first quarter down inside the Redbird one, and he responds here. Yeah, he just wants this ball right there. Good throw by Hill. He actually does get his foot down in bounds, but uh, I like the call by the official. Golson and Corbin both on the coverage, but the pass is complete. And a first down for the Eagles offense inside the Redbird 20 with 12 minutes and 20 seconds and counting left here in regulation. Georgia Southern with the football and an 11 point lead. And it's Peterson right up the middle. Short gain of about three yards as he's near the 15. Boy, if you're an Illinois State defender or coach right now, you cannot give up more than three points right here. If you give up a touchdown, then it's a three score game. If you give up a field goal, you're only down 14. You're still in the football game here with 11.55 to go. If Georgia Southern gets a touchdown here, boy, it's going to be a tough road for Illinois State. And the Eagles' defense really has not allowed any points on the board since that first drive. Illinois State got a late field goal, the final play of the half after an interception. Right. Second and seven now. Hill hands this time to Peterson, who's across the 10-yard line to about the nine. Golson in on the tackle, and he's very close to another first down 132 yards rushing now for Adrian Peterson he just continues to hammer away at Illinois State it'll be third and less than a yard now for the Eagle offense the ball is spotted inside the Redbird 10 and the strength of Adrian Peterson is beginning to wear on that Redbird defensive line On third down, he gets the call again. He's got a first down, and he's got a touchdown. touchdown. Uh, 
You know, we're talking a lot about the uh, running backs and quarterback for Georgia Southern. Let's give some credit to that offensive line. Rich McGrath, Brian Scott, Bob Bellingrath, Mark Williams, and Michael Anderson. Look at them all just getting off the ball. They're knocking people backwards. And when you've got a back like Adrian Peterson, that's going to mean a touchdown right there. And Peterson finds the end zone for the second time this afternoon. The extra point is good as Chris Chambers tacks on point number 28. And the Eagle lead is now up to 18 at 28 to 10. score Adrian Peterson finding the end zone for the third time this afternoon and the Eagles have really turned the screws now on the ISU Redbirds yeah that's the worst thing that could happen if you're an Illinois State Redbird fan I mentioned it now it's a three score game that puts a lot of pressure on your offense something that Illinois State really they in this playoff have not been down especially by 18 points we're going to find out what they're all about here with 10:47 uh, left to go in the quarter and it could be 10:47 left in this Redbird season, which has been an outstanding one for Todd Berry's team. 11 wins and two losses. A very, very short kick. A very short kick. And Troy Hunter takes the ball out of bounds, actually, where he fielded that. And the Redbirds are either going to start at about the 32 or perhaps even closer. Uh, Chris Chambers' kick was as short as I've ever seen a, a non- onside kick. Today's scoreboard is brought to you by the Bloomington Normal Local 99 Plumbers and Pipe Fitters Union. They do it right the first time. 28-10 Georgia Southern has an 18 point lead over the Redbirds. Not sure exactly what the penalty is. The Illinois State receiver actually called a fair catch but they may get him for attempting to run after the fair catch. I'm not sure we'll let the official make the call. Stay tuned to CBS 31 directly following the game for NCAA basketball. Coming up next, Duke at Michigan, immediately following our telecast of this football game. Well, the second time this afternoon, Kurt, I believe we're going to have a re-kick. <laughs> <laughs> Just when we say how rare that thing is, we get it twice in the same game. The Georgia Southern fans are hooping it up. They're trying to get back to their second consecutive 1AA championship game. This is the seventh semifinal appearance by this school in the 1AA playoffs and they are six for six. A win today would be seven wins in the semifinals. They've never lost in the final four until they get to the championship game. That's amazing. Well, they're usually playing at home, which is a nice thing for them. They don't lose, as we mentioned at the top of the show very often here. This is a great place to play. One of the best 1AA facilities that I've been to. And uh, the crowd is very supportive. They get out here very early, and uh, they really support this team. Chambers re-tees it, and again, a very short kick, and again, it's going to be Hunter. Again, he fields it about the 32, and this time he's dragged down, pushed back inside the 30-yard line. Tom LaRocco in on the tackle for the Eagles, who lead at 28-10 with 10.35 to go. That is a very difficult kick to field right there. I mean, that ball is up as high as a punt is, and uh, Illinois State should have probably called another fair catch right there. And so the Redbird offense comes back on the field and has not been in the end zone since the opening drive of the game. Got a late field goal in the second half, the final play of the second quarter, but scoreless here in the second half. And it's Burke who pitches to Kaysan, who fakes the reverse and tries to shake a tackler, but just can't do it as Jamar Jones was in and caught him from behind. In fact, it's a loss of one on the play. Yeah, just the minute you think you got a big play, Jamar Jones, a big sophomore out of uh, Douglasville, Georgia, really tracks down Avion Kaysen. You don't see that very often. No. I, I know we haven't seen it much this year, Avion Kaysen being tackled from behind. It's now second down and 11 for the Redbird offense. Under 10 minutes to go, and Dusty Burke is back to pass, and he's going downfield, and the play is covered nicely as the pass is out of bounds. The pass was intended for Hunter, and... Kiwaki Thomas was all over him on coverage. Yeah, he really was, step for step. Troy Hunter never had an opportunity to catch that football as Kiwaki Thomas, as we've mentioned, he's one of those corners 
that may be playing on Sundays next year. It's third down and 11. Five defensive backs now in for Georgia Southern. The Redbirds line up with three wide receivers to the near side. And Burke looks to the near side. His pass to Ricky Garrett is caught and then dropped. It's incomplete. As the pass was knocked out of his hands that time by David Young. Garrett had his hands on it, but Young stuck his hand in there and popped the ball loose. Yeah, good throw by Dusty Burke right there. You don't see that very often. Once Ricky Garrett gets his hands on the ball, he's pretty sure-handed receiver. That one they're able to pop out. Let's go to the field. Ernie Bonestock. back to Ernie a bit later. 9.46 here to go. And Strader is back to punt. It's a line drive punt that Anthony drops. Anthony Williams drops. It's a loose scramble for it, and the Redbirds have it deep in Georgia Southern territory. 24, Vito Golston right there. What a play did he make on this play. Knocks the receiver down after the muffed punt. Recovers the fumble at about the seven yard line, eight yard line. What a great play by Vito Golston. We'll see the play right here as Williams muffs that punch. Watch Vito Golston. You can do this. This is a legal play. He will knock down Williams and recover that punt. He has played well on special teams all year for the Redbirds and has played well today and is getting some looks on defense as well. But he's turning the ball over on offense now to the Redbird offensive attack, which has it deep in Eagles territory for the first time in the half, and it's a call to Avion Quezon who gets close to the five-yard line. It'll be a short gain for Quezon. Well, those are about the best offensive plays Illinois State's had uh, here in the last couple quarters is, uh, you know, special teams plays. Uh, Illinois State's offense just can't get anything cranked. Let's see if they can put one on the board here with 9.07 left. The Redbirds needed a break. They've been given one. Can they take advantage of it? Double tight end offense. Pricer and Bardwell in as the tight ends. Both wide receivers stacked to the bottom. Kaysen gets the call. He runs to the right side. He's going inside the five before he's stacked up about the three yard line where they'll spot his forward progress. <laughs> What a line surge by Mike Rodbro, number 68, the right guard for Illinois State, knocking his defensive lineman back into the end zone. Got a good push. Now Illinois State will have third and goal from about the three, Kurt. Florida A&M with a 24-19 lead now over Youngstown in the fourth quarter. Both Gateway Conference schools trailing in their 1AA semifinals, but the Redbirds knocking on the door, trying to get into the end zone for the first time since the opening drive of this game. On third down now. Tom Bardwell in motion here on the flat. Wide open. Touchdown to Scott Preisker that time. It's the same play that we saw last week at Hofstra that went to Tommy Bardwell. Yeah, exactly right. They moved Preisker over last week, if you remember that, in motion. This time they lock him up on the right-hand side. Bardwell goes in motion, and Dusty Burke is able to find him open in the end zone. Now the Redbirds on the board for the first time here in the second half as Dusty Burke flips the three-yard TD pass out to his tight end, Scott Preisker. Yeah, you see the replay right there. Really nothing you can do to stop that one. Let's see if Jake Strader can now make it an 11-point football game. Got it. The kick is up and through the uprights. And one of the senior leaders on this team, Scott Preisker, corrals the TD pass and pulls the Redbirds. Back in this one, 28-17. 28-17, the Eagles lead the Redbirds. Let's go down to the field now and Ernie Bonestall. Thanks a lot, guys, and you are looking at Glory, the Eagle. It's an 11-year-old mascot for the Eagle, a bald Eagle, and uh, this Eagle was shot last year, and that's how they were able to take it into captivity over at the Rapture Center for Georgia Southern. And guess what? The Eagles are undefeated ever since they got Glory, the Eagle, with the Eagles, and, of course, they're trying to protect their 22-game playoff winning streak here at Paulson Stadium where they are unbeaten as well. So uh, they say Eagles last about 50 years. That's a lot of wins to come. Indeed, 22-0 in home playoff games. The Eagles are in this facility, and they've won their last 22 home games over the course of the last three seasons. But the Redbirds have clawed to within 9, 28-17. Short kick that time is fielded by Benny Cunningham, and he's going to angle out of bounds at about the 32. 
You know, a lot of teams have had trouble fielding that kickoff that Illinois State did right there. Benny Cunningham did a great job. Obviously, they watch film as well and see that Illinois State likes that short kick like that. Cunningham did a great job. Today's scoreboard is brought to you by the Bloomington Normal Local 99 Plumbers and Pipe Fitters Union. They do it right the first time. 28-17, Illinois State taking advantage of that. Muffed punt, put some points on the board. And still, some time to go, 7.58. Right up the gut goes Adrian Peterson, and he's dragged Adrian down that Peterson time by Devin Finn. Carry. Three yards on the carry by Peterson, second down and seven. Tim Angston on the stop for Get a Illinois good look State. right here, end zone shot of what Adrian Peterson sees. Look at the gang tackling by Illinois State. Devin Finn, big hoss right there, but look at Peterson. Those legs still moving, dragging big Devin Finn, 6'7", 285, 290, able to drag him for an extra yard. And you see what the Redbirds are trying to do here in the fourth quarter. They're trying to tackle the ball. Ryan Zicola getting right. his hands in there, and if they can come away with another turnover, that's what those defenders are trying to do at this point. Here's Hill on the option. Pitches to the near side. It's Cunningham that gets the call, and he's wrestled down again. Gang tackling that Jimmy time Cunningham by the Redbirds. The Zicola carry. up to make the tackle along with Galen Scott. The There's a player right there, Ryan Zicola, that quietly is having a very nice game. A lot of pressure on him this afternoon at that out outside linebacker position. You know, you've got to come up, tackle the running back sometimes. Sometimes your, your defense's call is to get down there on the quarterback. That's a tough when you've got the uh, weapons that uh, Georgia Southern has. And it's a big third down play now for Georgia Southern with under seven minutes to go. It's third and three now at the 39-yard line as they're trying to march up the field and march some time off the clock. The lone setback now is Peterson. In motion is Cunningham. Peterson gets the call, and he's across the first down marker as he picked up the three yards necessary and got Peterson another yard on, on top carry. of it. Devin Finn on the tackle. Devin Finn on the tackle as well, and he's had a whale of a game for the Redbirds. Down, and the Eagles get a fresh set of downs now with the clock running at six and a half minutes and counting. I'm telling you, from what I see of Adrian Peterson, I think he could compete at any level. I know he's playing Division I AA, the Walter Payton Award winner, but uh, this guy could be playing Division I. There's no doubt about it. Well, I mean, he, he was is. recruited by Florida when his brother was playing there. Right but decided to come here to Statesboro where he had his team in a national championship game last year and is six minutes or so away from getting them again there today. He gets the call and he's up to about the 45 yard line before his forward, forward progress has stopped. Devin Finn again in on that tackle. You know, we heard Ernie talk about that this stadium is called Allen Paulson. The reason for that is Mr. Paulson, uh, he started Gulfstream Aeronautics, if you remember that company. They make uh, jets and all of that. He also, I thought something interesting, owned the horse Cigar, who ran for the Triple Crown back quite a few years ago. But uh, he's been one of the big supporters here of Eagle football. And uh, you like to have guys like Allen Paulson. And the clock is becoming Illinois State's biggest foe right now. Under five and a half minutes to go here. Ooh, and Peterson my. that time is hammered as Tim Angston came up and absolutely <laughs> laid him out. <laughs> well, Tim Angston's not going to go down without a fight. This is just a huge collision. Watch number 42. It's the white blur that comes into your screen about right there. That's how you tackle. Face on the football. Momentum going into the player. I love to see that. Angston, the senior out of Chicago, is hoping he's not playing in his final game as the clock winds down under five minutes now and counting. 28-17. Georgia Southern with the lead and the football. Yeah, it's a third and six situation now. Sorry about that, Kurt. Tim Angston's one of the three seniors at Illinois State to lose on that Georgia defensive Southern. unit uh, this year. They'll have eight coming back, so a lot coming back for those defensive Redbirds. The uh, Eagles have called timeout to talk things over on this third and six. I think they just need a blow. <laughs> Look at Adrian Peterson walking off. I think he's a little bit weary from that hit with Tim Angston. He's not walking a straight line right now. Let's go down to the field now. Ernie Bonestal. Tell you what, guys, we have the students for Georgia Southern. I know we still have 4.38 to go in the ball game. The 
Eagles with a 28-17 lead in this one. It's kind of a tradition here at Georgia Southern. They brought the goalposts down last year on the way to the national championship game, and they replaced them with brand new ones. And Georgia Southern officials told me they spent about $6,000. That's how much the two new goalposts are. But you can see the students are lining up all up and down this end of the end zone, and they would love nothing better than to bring these new goalposts <laughs> down, guys. Well, we've been told that, that if the Eagles emerge victorious this afternoon, that likely those goalposts are coming down. Well, you got some young ones in there, too. They're going to participate. <laughs> some with their faces painted, and uh, yeah, they are ready. 438 left here in the fourth. Well, they've got a great football tradition here, as we mentioned earlier, the 22-game home playoff winning streak, the four national championships. And the Redbirds trying to respond on this third and six. Hill keeps pitch now to Peterson, who's got the first down, and Morey shakes a tackle. He's across midfield. He's in the open field. Oh, my. And what he's a play. just got one man to beat, Sam Young, who trips him up at the 10 yard line. Adrian Peterson on the carry. On the spot, Sam Young. Adrian Peterson on the carry. A big back-breaking play for the All-American. The Walter Payton Award winner is the top Division I AA college football player in America. We didn't get a chance to see the block by Chris Johnson, number seven, on uh, Alfred Corbin, but, I mean, it was a decleater. He just knocked him on the ground, and once again, they're knocking at the door on the 11-yard line. They needed a huge play, and the Eagles go to their money player, and Adrian Peterson responded, and now on first down, it's Peterson before he's stopped up in the middle by a host of Redbird tacklers. Well, now if you're Illinois State, you're down two scores. You've got to think about using timeouts. They have three left uh, here with 3.46 left to go. I would imagine Illinois State's got to start using those, Kurt. This copywritten telecast is presented by the authority of Illinois State University and WMBD Television and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Illinois State University and WMBD Television. Three and a half minutes and counting. 28-17, Georgia Southern the lead on second down and eight from the Redbird nine now. It's Hill, who keeps turns up field. He's dragged down at the six yard line that time Greg as Tim Angston is in on the tackle. Tim Angston on the stop. Tell you how sore is Greg Hill going to be tomorrow. I mean, he has had some major collisions with those linebackers for Illinois State Time and just keeps Illinois bouncing State. up. You would be surprised if you saw him without his equipment on. He's not very muscular, kind of a you know, wiry guy, but uh, obviously very tough. Well, I think the soreness goes away when you've got a, when you've got a win <laughs> and you're looking forward to a national championship right. game. And Right now, that young man is three minutes and 11 seconds away from going back to the national title. Last year, they lost to UMass. They avenged that loss to Massachusetts by beating that team here last week in the national quarterfinals. And again, they're about three minutes away from another berth in the national championship game. Yes, and ripping down another set of goalposts as we just saw a warning sign for that. So at least they give you a warning down here when they're going to bring them down as more students continue to line up in that end zone. The Redbirds have called timeout, and that's why we have this stoppage in play. So Illinois State down to now two timeouts left, and Georgia Southern has just one timeout remaining. But again, the clock has now become as big an opponent for Illinois State as the Eagles have. It's third down and five now for GSU, and it's Hill under center. And he's going to keep. The play is being stretched out. The Redbird defense has snuffed this play out. That time is three tacklers got in on that on play. Scramble. Give Tim Angston credit for getting through, but it was Hamilton Wells that actually came up and made the hit, and now the Redbirds have been called timeout again. Yeah, there's really no ru room to run for Greg Hill right here. Tried to run a quarterback draw, quarterback trap, something in there timeout inside. Illinois State. Illinois State reacted pretty well. Now we'll use number Timeout number two with 258 no left. On the play. Fourth down and five. We should mention that both defenses have played up oh. to snuff. There's no question about it. Georgia Southern averaging better than 50 points a game. Illinois State averaging about 36 points a game. And right. neither of those these two offenses are going to get that far. Sports Extra on CBS 31. Join Dave Snell 
and I every Friday night at 1020 for an expanded look at the day's sports scores, highlights, interviews, and previews of what's ahead for the weekend. The one and only place you'll find Sports Extra is here on CBS 31. I watch that. No doubt about it. You and Mr. Snell. Glad to hear that. Well, you know you got one viewer. That's that's well, good. With my mother, that makes two. <laughs> two fifty-eight to go here, and Georgia Southern. The fans are starting to smell victory and smell another trip to Chattanooga in the national championship game. Florida A&M at last check was leading Youngstown State twenty-four to nine in the fourth quarter of the other semifinal. So both Gateway Conference school teams find themselves behind but give credit to the gateway for putting two of the final yeah, four exactly. teams in the country still playing one double-a football and now it's a fourth down opportunity and the eagles are going for it they've got their offense still on the field hill is back to pass and he's sacked and brought down that time on the blitz it was angston who came from the outside and hammered hill from behind <laughs> greg hill is still looking backside going how the heck did he get in there angston usually is the middle linebacker that time he snuck outside came in from the outside showed a lot of speed to close on greg hill right there put another big hit on him the clock does stop with 254 on the change of possession well if this is indeed the final game for tim angston he has left oh, nothing on the field gone out with a fight there's no doubt about that Look at this formation here by Illinois State. This is a play that they Fumble call Ruski. Sucker. And on the near sideline, the play was snuffed out by Avion Kaysan. Avion Kaysan was tackled that time, I should say, by Corey Middlebrooks. It's a play that the Redbird offense calls Sucker, yeah. where they line up a couple of guys on one side, try to sneak you on the other side. Well, now they got to get out of that huddle quickly as the clock continues to run. Unfortunately, they took 20 seconds off the clock to try and run that play. Now you got to get back into your two-minute offense. You see the time in the corner now, 2.20 and counting. Burke flips out now in the flat, and Savion Kaysan, who's got speed. But he's hit and upended that time. Nicely done by LeVar Rainey, who's in there as a nickel back. And the clock continues to yeah. come down. Got to get that hurry up offense. Dusty Burke screaming at his players and linemen to get lined up. He's got third and about six. No two minute warning in college football. And that's the reason why there's no stoppage of play. Burke out of the shotgun now. He's being chased in his own end zone. He finds Avion Kaysan again, who makes the catch, tries to get out of bounds. It was Kiwaki Thomas who came up and made the tackle and the stop but the uh, clock is stopped now is the ball will be marked at the 22. Yeah, right at the first down marker as well. We're going to see the uh, broken play here by Dusty Burke. Fortunately, he's able to find uh, Avion Kaysan out in the flat. As you see Dusty audibling at the line of scrimmage here for the next play. The student body is all getting ready in the end zones now to rip those goal posts down. Ricky Garrett corrals that pass, and he's out of bounds now across the 30 to about the 31. It's Kiwaki Thomas again in on the tackle. And the Redbirds are close to another first down, and the clock has stopped. Boy, where has Ricky Garrett been all afternoon? They have had him covered like a blanket. You're going to see the catch here right by Ricky, and finally he gets in the action for the Redbirds. And a smart play for Garrett to get out of bounds to stop the clock at 131. 28-17 our score here late fourth quarter. Georgia Southern the lead, Illinois State with the football. Burke packed the pass. He's coming to the near sidelines. And there's a flag on the play as the incompletion that Ricky Garrett is going to be called for offensive pass interference, I imagine. Yeah, frustration foul right there by Ricky Garrett. You see his head down right there. Earthwind Moreland just had him covered like a blanket. And they're talking to him a little bit. They know that Ricky Garrett was an All-American receiver last year. Numbers down a little bit this year, but they're letting him hear about it. An offensive pass interference is the call. Whistled against Ricky Garrett as he was working on the near sidelines again against Earthwind Moreland. There you see the student body is all gathering up down now near that far end zone. And I'd say that that, uh, <laughs> that upright is in some serious jeopardy. I think we need to make mention that this has been the greatest season in the history of Illinois State football. Let's don't take anything away from Georgia Southern, but what a year by Illinois State and the coaching staff, and what a job they have all done. 
Well, what Georgia Southern has here is where Illinois State wants to be. You're playing right. year in and year out for a national championship. You're Steve right. Castro makes the catch, and he's got a first down and more as he's out near the 40-yard line, and the clock will stop while the chains are moved. LeVar Rainey again in on the tackle for the Eagles. But that short pass over the middle that Castro has once, uh, run successfully. That's right. We saw a touchdown on this play last year. He showed Castro a little bit of speed right there. He says he only runs a 4-6, but uh, nice burst of speed by Steve Castro. Redbirds quickly up to the line of scrimmage now, and out of the shotgun, Dusty Burke is calling the two-minute offense. He's back to pass, a three-man rush, pass intended for Castro, out of bounds, and complete again. Kiwaki Thomas on the coverage. You know, we mentioned that eight players on defense are coming back for Illinois State. They're going to get nine players back uh, on the offensive side. So I'll tell you, the best game of the season next year for Illinois State might be the spring game. They've got some people competing for positions right there as you see the overthrow by Dusty Burke. Timmy Angston's had a great game on defense. Oh, he, almost he, got, he almost got that ball out of bounds that time. They're making an announcement to try to keep the fans off the field because they are starting to gather on both end zones yeah, now. They're both gone now. Dusty Burke on the quarterback draw. He's got a first down and more. He's across midfield. He's inside the 50 to the 45-yard line now of the Eagles with a minute one to go. And again, the clock is stopped while the chains are moved. Redbirds are trying to go down with a fight here. And again out of the shotgun with the clock running now under a minute to go in this one. Burke is back to pass. He goes over the middle to Avion Case on the pass is incomplete that time. The Smart drop right there by Avion. He was going to be tackled in bounds. Illinois State only has one timeout left. Good idea by dropping that football. Chris O'Neill on the coverage now for the Eagles. The Redbirds will actually have a chance to huddle for the first time in about five plays. I can't hear you. Over. Todd Berry's troop. Troops have had an outstanding season, as Steve mentioned, but they're not willing to go down without some sort of noise here. And out of the shotgun now, it's Burke. He looks across the middle, and he's got Ricky Garrett, the senior, who makes the catch. He has another first down inside the 35, and we've got a late flag on the play. Ernie Bonestell, take it away. Well, guys, things are really starting to get carried away. The crowds, uh, you guys, have, Illinois State has played a great game. They've had a great season. I know Todd Berry's got to be really proud of his team. What a job he's done in his fourth season, the second trip in a row to the playoffs in Georgia Southern. Obviously playing pretty nasty today. 28 to 17, 46 seconds left in the game. And uh, you can see around me the crowds lining up. If we pan over and take a look over here, you can see the crowd all over the place, both end zones. <laughs> Really had a lot of fun with you guys. I know uh, your fans back home at CBS 31 are really enjoying the playoff atmosphere. Yeah, Ricky Garrett, you're going to see Illinois State being backed up here after the completion to Ricky Garrett. Ricky's going to get a taunting foul, backed up 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Now they'll have first and 10, but Illinois State had the ball about in, inside the 30-yard line. Now it's at the 48-yard uh, line. And it's Dusty Burke again, back to pass. He's under pressure. He goes over the middle. The pass is incomplete. He took a big time hit that time as the defender came in. Jamar Jones was in Dusty Burke's face. 38 seconds left in this one. You see the replay right here is Dusty Burke. You see that hit by Jamar on uh, Dusty Burke, and he's taken quite a few of those here in the second half. And really, in th throughout the second quarter, Dusty has played on his back a lot of this football game. Thirty-eight seconds to go in this one. Out of the shotgun, Dusty Burke passing. His pass is broken up that time nicely as the play was intended for Wayne Riley and Ryan Haddon broke the play up. Yeah, Ryan Haddon. We haven't talked a lot about him this afternoon, but they say he's the biggest hitter in that defensive secondary for Georgia Southern, and that was just a nice play. We understand from Youngstown, Ohio, that the Youngstown State Penguins have taken the lead now over Florida A&M with a touchdown and now lead 27-24. So Youngstown State now at home has a late three-point lead over Florida A&M in that other national semifinal. So maybe there will be a representative from the Gateway Conference in the national title game. 
on third and 10 now. Dusty Burke airs it out. He's going deep. The pass is going towards Ricky Garrett, and it's intercepted that time by R.P. Thompson. And he just takes a knee as he slides at the 23-yard line, and that's going to put the cap around this one with just 19 seconds to go. <laughs> and already the end zone here on the left side is about ready to come down. And it's coming down. Oh, my. Watch out there. Somebody's going to get hurt. Now, the officials do have the right to call this game off, but there's still 19 seconds to go, and security has just absolutely lost control of this game. There's still 19 seconds to go. One end zone goal post is down, and the other one is ready to come down. Yeah, it's coming down, too, no doubt about it. 19 seconds left on the clock, and this game really is going to have to be called. I don't know how any way they can get uh, this, clear, this field cleared. Well, not only have they taken the uprights down, they've taken them apart. Yeah. Well, they want pieces of those things. They can't get the one down in the other end zone, down in the right-hand side of your screen, but uh, they're going to carry the one from the left hand down uh, to the other end zone. Well, now, things got out of hand here last weekend when Massachusetts was in town, and in fact, the NCAA was here this week and asking the athletic department here at Georgia Southern what they would do to beef up security to prevent any incidents from happening this year, this weekend. Now, Illinois State University has taken its team off the field, so it appears that the officials have just let the clock wind down, and they're going to call this game official at this point. Yeah, Todd Berry, I'm sure, said, let the clock run. We're down 11. They've got the football. What a great win for the Georgia Southern Eagles as they go on once again to the national championship game, Kurt. Well, it didn't exactly end in an orderly fashion, but... You can't take away from the effort of the Georgia Southern Eagles, who advance to their second consecutive Division I AA championship game. They beat Illinois State 28-17. It is now an official, a final score here from Paulson Stadium in Statesboro. 28-17, the Eagles beat the Redbirds to move in the 1AA title game.